What's up, everyone? All right, another Pokemon card stream. It's, wow, that's a tilted camera. It is the late night stream, and it's me, TCC. How's it going, everyone? Wow, listen to this music. This is good music. I didn't want to talk because it was so good. Did you guys see this? Alexander Hewitt, he pulled the Misty's Tears last night. I'll show that off a little bit. And for tonight, we have something very special. This is a vintage box of Star Wars cards. I don't really know anything about vintage Star Wars cards. I'm not very good at them. Uh, but we'll be selling these tonight. I just have this one box. You can buy them for $5 a pack. Please don't buy like the whole box out. Let everyone else have a shot. So, you know, probably just buy one or two of them if you want them. Because I really just have this one box. And I have no clue what's in it. I have no clue if it's going to be fun or not. It probably will be fun if I had to guess. So we have a little box of vintage Star Wars. Look for the etched foil cards, two cards randomly inserted in every 36 packs. So there's two chase cards per box. Woo! Star Wars night. I like old Star Wars. I didn't like the new the new series, but I did like the old one. Even the, uh, the prequels were okay. Did I watch UFC? Uh, I was asleep. I did not see the UFC, unfortunately. I was hanging out with Quip for like a very good time. Adam Vincent says, I'm in for one. Woo! No, but no, I did not see the UFC fight. Was there something good in this one? I probably should watch. <laughs> There's always so much to do in the day. Uh, what I did get done is I made two TV stands and then I put two TVs together. And so now I've got my little gamer streamer set up now almost have it. I mean, there's still a few more steps, but yes, I'm very close to streaming games again. Mr. The people want to vote someone off the island. Oh, okay. Evan, is it, is it you? For a very good time, huh? Super Pokey Luke says, Mr. I messaged you on eBay, but you didn't respond. Oh, I vaguely remember that. Uh, was it that you wanted to sell me a card? I think you wanted to sell me a card. Uh, I, I think I saw that, but I, I almost don't remember it. Uh, when it comes to buying cards, I usually don't buy anything unless it's like pretty expensive or it's a pretty large transaction because I just can't be buying and selling one card at a time and it, it would take all my time up to do that. What's up, Lexo? Justin Huerta, any Spaceballs cards? Man, good question. I wonder if they did make Spaceball cards. Probably not though, because it was just like one movie. Packology says, hi, mister. What's up, Packology? Man, look at this. Darth Vader and the second Death Star. You know, when I first watched the original Star Wars trilogy, I didn't understand that they had a second Death Star. I was like, did the first one survive? What happened? So I didn't understand that there were two of them. From what years? Uh, I believe this is a box from 1993. I think that's what it said. 1993. <laughs> 1993, huh? Crazy. Kind of like Pokemon almost. This is older than the Pokemon cards, but uh, the year you were born. Hey, now I know how old you are. You're getting old, mister. <laughs> mister, yo, it's Brian is back. He wants a Snorlax slab. Let's go ahead and give this the snip. So that was even before the prequels came out. Yeah. Well, you know, they had like a Star Wars remastered collection that came out that was a pretty big deal back then. That was when they did things like made it so that, you know, like Han Solo didn't shoot first, stuff like that. They added scenes to the show that were really dumb and the graphics were very poor on them. Ooh, there it goes. So really, uh, what's interesting about this is this is actually older than many of the Pokemon card boxes we open up and, uh, and now it's open. Ah, there we are. Oh, there they are. Wow, I'm ready to dig into these. It says series one, huh? That's kind of cool. Morning from the UK. How's it going from the UK? Go ahead and set these down behind me. Mister, why is it so cheap? Uh, I asked myself the same question. I have no clue. Uh, I'm, I'm doing them for $5 a pack and it just, it wasn't that much. <laughs> I have no clue. Are you going to ever do a Neo Genesis live break? <sighs> you know, people were commenting that they really, really, really like the pack breaks. Maybe we could do an, a super expensive pack break on a pack of Neo Genesis. I don't know. 
Michael's story whereabouts. I think Topps just printed a ton in the a ton of stuff in the 90s. Mister, I'll take the store credit, says Cheese. All right, sounds good, Mr. Cheese. Let me get a little energy card here. It looks like I'm running low on the energy cards. And we're gonna write your name down. You don't already have a card, do you? All right, we're gonna write Cheese. There we go. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Cheese, I, I, I would've talked more about it, but I was, I was like going live right then. Opal. So Cheese did a little trade with the Opal. Sexy Opal. What is this music? I don't like this music as much. Let's try the next one. This is called Last Bible. Okay, let's turn it down a little bit too. All right. Well, I'm ready to open a bazillion cards tonight. Who knows what's gonna happen? I'm sure we're gonna open all of those tops cards. I'm only allowing you guys to order about two at a time because I don't want someone to wipe them out and no one else to get a chance. So you can get you can get up to two of them. That was the new Christina Aguilera album. Michelle O'Rourke. Lou Bay's here. Woo! <laughs> All right. Love my Yu-Gi-Oh luck. Oh, you got, you're getting good Yu-Gi-Oh luck or bad Yu-Gi-Oh luck? Peta says, can I spam? I suppose you could say me, 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 me. You already ordered three. Casey says, hello. How's it going, Casey? Miss, Misty for sale. Did Alec not want to send anymore? Uh, Alec said that... Oh, oh, it's not for sale, um, but he decided he wanted to grade it with PSA when PSA opens. I think that's a fair enough choice. Uh, the card looks slightly off-center. CGC is pretty rough on the grade, so they might have graded at 9, and PSA might grade at 10. Uh, you know, if, if the CGC grades at 9.5, I think that's all right, um, but I think that the PSA 10 is probably going to be the most valuable thing. I got some good but heavy news given to me tonight. Hun. What? Wait, you're pregnant with twins, but he's not the daddy? Travasco said, they said four people were shot at first, but now it's been lowered to three. Hey, mister, can I see what I got? I fell asleep. One of them was a Nationals employee. What? What are we talking about? Baby Zaddy. How's it going, Alan Finnamore? I ordered four packs before he said that. All right, well, it's got to be refunded, okay? It's just two packs of Star Wars. I have one box. That means there's a total of 36 packs. Please do not order a ton of the Star Wars packs, guys. There was a shooting right outside of Nationals game today. What? Man, everybody ran around with their guns shooting each other. All right, I'm voting to take all the guns away. Let's see. Let's find out what's going on. We're starting tonight out with an order, I think, from Luis Rodriguez, right? I think I saw that earlier. Give me a second. All right, do not order any Star Wars packs. They are sold out. I'm going to go mark them sold out. They are sold out. All right, there we go. <laughs> Jesus. So... Well, I, I suppose I could have offered them at a higher price, but I didn't want to do that because it just you'd be overpaying. So, but then maybe it would have slowed down. Luis Rodriguez says, wait a second, is this one? Oh, that's, never mind. Yeah, Luis Rodriguez is the first order of the night. He wants one Vivid and one Shiny Fates. Oh, Luis, here you are. Ooh. And, uh, give me a minute. There was something else. I was, oh, I know what I was going to do. What is this music, man? It's groovy. I've, I'm hearing this music for the first time, but it is super groovy. Can you look at my Santa Scorch VMAX? Uh, I could. Let's go ahead and open these up for Mr. Lewis. We're going to get started. Should we be allowed to have military way, military grade weapons? I'll take a Shinnin face pack instead of the refund, says Big T. Here's Meowth. Reggie Rock. Why didn't you buy more boxes? It's an experiment, that's why. Uh, you know, we're just we're just playing around with it. Galarian Obstagoon, very nice. All right. Galarian Obstagoon. So that's for Lewis. Lewis sets the tone by pulling the hottest card in the entire Shining Face set. So I've been meditating all day since my mother told me she is stepping down as priestess of our family's coven. She's stepping down as priestess. Oh, man. 
Next up, we've got Justin Huerta. How's it going, mister? I'd like 15 packs of King's Court. Oh, mister. Well, I got some King's Court right here. You want 15 of them, huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Sweet. Is there going to be another Star Trek movie? That's right. <clears throat> and Obi-Wan Kenobi will be in it. <laughs> Sneep. Did anyone else pull full art from King's Court? Sneep. Focus Grub says hello there. What's up, Focus Grub? General Kenobi. Sneep. My mother's retiring after 50 years of leaving her coven with my father. <laughs> okay. Sneep. Hey, we'll toss this over here. The only covens I know are Pokey Covens. What do we got here? We've got Morph King Stigi Gel. Stigi Gel. Holy. Did you say the art piece you're going to make with your wife? Oh, that was all talk. We, you know, we're not decided on anything. Today we put some TVs together. <laughs> we put some TV stands and TVs together and we watch TV together. Is the OG Pokemon set still worth selling or should I keep them forever? I'd keep them forever. Mister, what's in a bulk brick? A whole bunch of Pokemon bulk cards. Should have been, uh, maybe I should define it better. Scrap Twin Dragon. Face Card Fusion. Ten Dangle D-Holes. I'll show you a D-Hole. We have number F-Zero Utopic Draco Future. Woo. Oh, man. Here's number 49, Fortune Tune. Joker's Wild. Thunder Speed Summon. Court of Cards. Can you let me know where the large is at? Just wondering, I'm still... Uh, yeah, the large is... I think either 12 or 13 spots are sold, which means there's either 6 or 7 spots remaining. Wow, I didn't realize how lucky I must have gotten when I pulled that collector's full art because they are not pulling again. I did not realize that at all. I didn't even know I'd found one when I first opened them. I just noticed it later. I'm like, oh, that's strange. <laughs> so that is for Justin Horta. I'm sorry, Justin. No crazy collector's art in there. Collector's rare. They call them collector's rare. I like the word full art. So Justin... Maxomble. He didn't say I have a bag, but I feel like he does. Is it just in another location? What shows did you watch? Um, I wish I... <laughs> I don't know what to say. Here it is, Justin Horta. Great pull, $30. We're watching something, okay? Wink. All right, thick bag for Mr. Justin Horta. I found a collector's rare just now. I waited to open my six packs till you went live. Sweet! All right. Large is for a spot in a gym break. That's correct. All you did last night was ask the same question, and you're doing it again. Mister, could you do that for me, mister? What? Prize for the large is $750 booster. Spack is my favorite Star Wars character. I like Spack, too. Uh, uh, peef be with you. Dustin Carpio says, hello, mister. Two chilling rain. Oh, too chilling rain. Who else thinks we're going to end up in lockdowns again? Me, 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 me. So you would also like one Digimon. Digimon! Mom, I don't want any Digimons. That's too bad, Timmy. I have a $12 store credit from the pack break. I have a bag. Sounds good, Mr. Dustin. Here we go. Okay. Perfect. This is for Dustin Carpio. A little bit of Digimons, a little bit of Pokemons. I think Pokemon does a better job just because the Pokemon's names are like more satisfying. Imagine feeling like you got to name every single monster in your sort of like kids, whatever TV show. Something Mon, Poopoo Mon, uh, Flying Around Oman. You know what I mean? Here's Celebi. But I got to say, Pokemon does lack waifus, and Digimon appears to not lack waifus. So there's a trade off. You got Flower Cannon and 
Vidramon, you did it! Vidramon, go! I don't know anything about Vidramon. <laughs> if there's another year of online school, say Anora World. Pull the Galarian something. Oof, a good waifu set is why. Gets my wheels turning. There we go. Pokemon has better waifus. That's true. Pokemon does have better trainers, actually. Uh, I think the Digimon trainers, they were all like little kids. So that's for Dustin Carpio. Dustin, where's your bag? You've got a large bag. I know you do, right? You're not just going to be in the D-Box, are you? Pokemon has more waifus. Yeah, but can you own the waifus? Hmm? That's right. With Digimon, you can own a waifu. In Pokemon, you have to convince her to go out with you. See? Totally different dynamic. Totally different dynamic. It is kind of weird, isn't it? The uh, Digimon waifus, they're like, that's my Digimon. You know what I mean? Now go battle. There's Gardevoir and Jinx. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think of Jinx. I forgot about Jinx. You got me, bro. <laughs> Next up, we got Michael Cusick. Five Star Wars. So Mr. Michael's going to get a partial refund because it's a limit of two packs. Give me a second. And uh, let me think. That's a $15 refund, right? Yes. I also have a few of the misprint Zapdos. Also a few misprint Pikachus. All right. So Mr. Michael Cusick, we had to do a little refund. You probably didn't hear me say that I didn't want people buying more than two. And really what I should have done is just made it a limit of one pack. There it is. Ooh. You'll own nothing and be happy. Agenda 21. Yeah, I guess at $5 a pack, someone could just buy the whole box. It wouldn't even be hard for some people. Okay, there we go. So we've got two Star Wars packs from 1993. These are actually older than all of the English vintage Pokemon. So it's kind of interesting. These are quite old, everyone. I've never done this before, so I don't know what to expect. All right, so what do we got here? We've got <clears throat> Luke Skywalker, as is expected. Luke! Should I sleeve every one of them? Is there like a rare card in the pile? Here's a picture of New Hope. So these are like sketches, huh? Here's a sketch of Darth Vader. It's interesting. Chewbacca. Got a little breathing device. He's on the planet Hoth. What is this? We never saw this in the movie. Was that one of their... Maybe that was like one of their concepts that they never did. Oh, it's the monster from uh, Jabba the Hutt's palace. Ragnar or something? I don't remember the name of it. Rancor. It's called the Rancor. In this production painting... Oh, they explained it. Hold on. So I want to go back over here. Bo Hampton. I wanted to do Han Solo on Dagobah mainly because I like the character and I like the planet. Where else but in science fiction can you make a statement like that? After assisting his former teacher, Will Eisner, back in the late 70s, Hampton broke into the comics business with the limited work for DC's Witching Hour. Huh. So this is Han Solo on Dagobah fighting, I guess, uh, the bounty hunter. So interesting. And finally, is it the same bounty hunter either? The bounty hunter looks different. The Wookiee family. <laughs> so strange. Holy <laughs> pull Spock. Typical Wookiee family. <laughs> Have you guys seen this? It's the way artist Joe Johnson described this drawing based on a skit for the 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special. Have you guys seen the, the Holiday Special? It's absolutely insane. Absolutely crazy. All right, next pack. So. Here's another sketch. The rebels transcend evil in this concept? Huh. Here's the uh, second Death Star, still in construction. Not ready to operate yet. Or is it? This must this must have been an early concept for Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Monarch of the Underworld. 
Here's Luke and Leia, brother and sister. Freaking Han, uh, freaking uh, George Lucas. What was he eye on? It's uh, another picture of Luke. Here's Luke and Yoda. And finally, we got two more. Ooh, you got the R2-D2. So these appear to be bounty hunters, I believe. I believe these are bounty hunters. Yeah, two mercenaries. And then here is R2-D2, one of the most iconic characters, right? Everyone remembers R2-D2. Bleep, 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 bleep. Three-legged barrel-shaped utility astromech droid. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. That was for Michael Cusick. Thank you, Michael. That was a lot of fun. Those are some good cards, says Eric. Well, I don't think they're very rare or anything. Um, you know, it mentioned that there's two, like, special hollow cards in a box of 36, and none of those were hollow. So, hopefully you're the one that pulls the hollow card, right? And that one probably is kind of rare. Next up, we got Adam Vinson, who says, one in the Star Wars. Mr. Adam. So, if you guys are liking these, we could probably open some more Star Wars cards. But I cannot guarantee you at all that they are worth collecting. Now, I do know that some Star Wars cards are quite valuable. But I don't know if it's these. Uh, these might not be valuable at all. So, this is just for fun. With Pokemon cards, I'm very confident about the value of Pokemon cards. But I would not be, uh, let's say, investing in these. You could just open them for fun if you wanted. All right, here we go again. We've got... Oh, this one seems like it's a bit glossier. Check the booster pack for rarity and odds. Oh, I see what you're saying. Good uh, good idea. Give me a minute. Nope, it just says eight premium cards. Look for etched foil cards. So etched cards and foil cards. Doesn't say anything about rarity. Let's check the card over itself. So here's the same Wookiee family, and it does not talk about rarity here. And actually, I can already see repeating cards. So these are common and commons is what they are. These are not rare. Here's another R2-D2 right away. Uh, this guy, this goofy guy. <laughs> Sam Keith. He had a big nose. Why he chose Jabla's cackling hench creature. Oh, can you believe she passed away? I forgot about that. I wasn't even thinking about it. Princess Leia. She got away from the helpless hero cliche in most fantasy literature of this kind. Huh. Man. TCC, I'm a mister. Here's uh, the pig soldier for Mr. Job of the Hut, And here is C-3PO. Ooh. Very cool. That was for Mr. Adam Vinson. Thank you, Adam. And Adam, let's go find your bag. Adam Smith, Adam Jones, Amos, Andre. AC Marshall. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he's got to do so much work to find, like, one bag. Especially what's in the, when it's an A bag. A bags are so hard to find sometimes. Here's Adam Vinson, because there's, like, five different locations they can be in. Put on some non-copyrighted Star Wars music. I couldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't risk it. Well, actually, uh, that could, that does give me an idea. Star Wars game OST. Let's see. Jedi Fallen Order. Let me try Game Boy. Wait, is that Super Nintendo? Let me try Game Boy, because if it's an 8-bit... Maybe it would work. Star Wars soundtrack, Game Boy. Let's try it out. All right. <laughs> so that might not trigger copyright. <laughs> All right. Good, good uh, suggestion. Next up, we have Damon Sims, who wants a Star Wars pack. Oh, Mr. Damon. Damon Sims, here's your pack. Don't risk it, mister. It's not a big deal. 
I'll just lose like 15 bucks of ad revenue. Not a lot of money, to be honest. It stacks up if you miss it every night, though, I suppose. Oh, it's the Slave Leia card. All right, Slave Leia. Here's a Stormtrooper riding a giant iguana. Here's the, I don't remember his name. He was a really important general, right? His name is Grand Moff Tarkin. Huh. Very interesting. Who's this? So we've already seen this one. Moff Tarkin, thank you. Yeah, I apologize. I'm a Star Wars fan, but not like a huge Star Wars fan, you know? I didn't like memorize everything. I've just seen the movies a bunch. The Speeder Bike Chase was a heart-pumping non-stop action sequence that took dozens of crafts people dozens of craftspeople months of time and effort. Hmm. Well, I think it was worth it. Does he have two lightsabers here? Look at that. That was a concept art for Darth Vader, I guess. Huh. Boris Vallejo, the fantasy artist renowned for his Amazonian women and Herculean men, took on a commission from the Coca-Cola Company to do four promotional posters for The Empire Strikes Back. Huh. That's so interesting. And what do we have here? Spotting the some oncoming Imperial forces, Han Solo and Luke Skywalker race across the windswept ice fields of Hoth to something, the something... Yeah, you can barely read that. I don't know why. Huh. This is so interesting. Sorry, I'm going a little slow. We'll probably start speeding up once we've seen all of these. Huh, so a lot of people drew Star Wars art. That's very cool. That was for Damon Sims. Mr. Damon, I'm sorry, you're be uh booster pack that's the word i'm looking for your booster pack did not have an etched or hollow card in it so it's another cold pack but all the cards are really cool i'm gonna guess here's a damien dolan does he need a new bag he says i have a bag okay we're looking for damon sims hmm why is it so difficult to find just one bag should not be this difficult. <laughs> Let's check up top. Here it is, Damon Sims. Your back's not very large. I guess I put it up top because we were running out of room. I might someday redesign the entire table. All right, there we go. Next up, we got Alex PSX. Two packs for Star Wars. You got it, Mr. Alex. So Alex gets two packs as well. You had my bag last night, says Pokey Dig. I'm sure I did. Screw Tarkin, he was a jerk. Help Palpatine. The best movie of the lot is Empire Strikes Back. Sneep. New table hype. Sneep. <laughs> All right, here we go. These are for Alex PSX. He has a shot for the hollow because it hasn't shown up yet. You can see a crease in the middle of the card. That's actually something that occurs with Pokemon cards, too. Here's Leia disguised as an assassin or mercenary. Oh, very sexy. The dancing lady. <laughs> now, wait a second. Did they add this character later? I don't remember. Hmm. What do we have here? Just another really cool artwork. Max Rebo, I want the Luke and Leia, Leia making out card. <laughs> I don't remember this guy. Was he in the... Oh! A battered chrome wardroid originally was envisioned by Ralph McQuarrie as a somewhat sleeker specimen, also known as the flute droid, was one of several bounty hunters summoned along with Boba Fett. His familiarity stems from his reproduction as both a small action figure and the largest and rarest of the Kenner line of oversized dolls. Huh. So this was the original design for him. Cool. And what's this? Death Star Battle. So cool. <laughs> what is this? Guess that's a drawing of Luke Skywalker. 
so weird. Had he been chosen yet? Hmm. Here's the evil emperor. <laughs> that droid is out of Mandalorian. Oh, cool. He's in the Mandalorian show. That's very neat. Is Mandalorian considered a, a prequel or a sequel or... I mean, like, what is the timeline on it is what I guess I'm asking. Hey, look, it's young George Lucas. Dude. He's almost as good as that lady who runs Disney for... Uh, I'm sorry, Star Wars for Disney now, right? Their name, like, Kathy or something, I remember. Hmm, very neat. Wow, what the heck is this? Oh, this is the... Uh, this is the job of the Hut guy, too. Very neat. After six, before seven? Okay, interesting. Is the Chewbacca's? Look at all those Wookiees. What is this music? This is still from that Star Wars game. Oh, Hot Mama. Holy. Takes place between six and seven. What is this? That's the giant worm. He's much bigger than he... Yeah, there's the little spaceship right there, right? Millennium Falcon. Hey, they're flying out of his mouth. That was pretty wild. Oh! He shot first. Han shot first. All right, Greedo. I think his name's Greedo. Very cool. Yeah, forgive me if I'm bad with the names. I haven't had to recall these names in a very long time. <laughs> A bounty hunter working for Job the Hut gets stabbed. <laughs> it's so funny. It makes you think of Han Solo doing this. Pew. So that goes to Mr. Alex, PSX. And Mr. Alex, I'm afraid you were not the one to pull either of the super rare cards. If you think about them, if there's only two rare cards in the box, it's kind of like full arts or hyper rares. Okay, after that we have... Justin Huerta, who says three Star Wars. Mr. Justin, there was a limit of two, so I'm going to go ahead and refund one. Greedo card looks awesome. <laughs> what is this music? Baba Fett the goat. <laughs> this is like a mix of the, um, the canteen music and whatever this action music is. <laughs> okay, now we're ready. So, Mr. Justin, two packs. Ooh. This music is popping. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> Can you look at my senator? Your senator? I am the senate. <laughs> Your senator? What do we got here? We've got... Oh, very cool. Wow, that's some neat artwork, man. Look at the, like, the lion mice down here, whatever those are. These guys look beefy. It's another Luke Skywalker. Everyone's painting Luke Skywalker's face. He looks so different now that he's old, you know? Aging really changes you. There's the droids playing music, probably for Jabba the Hutt. Another image of the Rancor. Very nice. And what is this? So this is Leia and Luke. A close encounter of a different kind is portrayed in this. Darth Vader confronts Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia at the Temple of Pomajema in the swamplands of Mimban, where they were searching for the all-powerful Kyber Crystal. What? You don't remember that in the film? That's because the story is from Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Oh, very cool. Oh! Oh, I love the bad guy spaceships, the little TIE fighters. Those were always so cool. Now, who is this guy? I recognize him. He looks a lot like um, the characters that would be in the prequels. When he was called upon to romp in George Lucas' playground, he came up with this slew of bizarre and wondrous alien creatures to populate the cantina. Oh, very interesting. So were they designed in the old movies before they came to the prequels? Can you look at my census scorch to see if it would be good? No, I'm afraid I can't do that right now. Okay, mister, we're opening up some cards, all right? Uh, there, it, there is a possibility to order a pre-grade if you'd like me to do a pre-grade on your cards, but I don't, I don't necessarily do that for free, okay? So here we go. The design of Star Wars. What do we got? We've got 
Boba Fett. Look at that, Boba Fett. Uh, Mr. Casey, what you can do is go back to the timestamp of when I open up your card and go go hit the pause button, okay? Go hit the pause button and, and take a look at it from back then. Whoa! It's C-3PO and he's falling apart. Here's another Boba Fett. All right, another Boba Fett. To me, Boba Fett is visually the most interesting character in Star Wars. He was super bad, truly ominous, a high plains drifter. <laughs> Boba Fett was always very popular. And Mandalorian is basically, uh, you know, in that same design, huh? I never watched Mandalorian. Here's Obi-Wan. I think the, uh, the sequels killed Star Wars for me. I just can't do it anymore. Can't watch the TV shows. I watched the one with um, Young Solo or whatever, the Solo Adventure movie, and I was just really surprised at how much not fun I was having. What is this? Boba Fett is in The Mandalorian. The Emperor Strikes Back in the final cataclysm, cataclysmic battle between good and evil in this production painting by Ralph McQuarrie from Return of the Jedi after Luke Skywalker has defeated his father. Uh, Darth Vader in a fierce battle won't turn into the dark side. The Emperor shoots him with blinding bolts of energy, evil lightning, in order to kill him. But Vader, who was once Anakin Skywalker, musters his last ounce of strength to save his son. Huh. So that's the image of the, Empire, uh, the Emperor. Very interesting. Girls should not have lightsabers. What? <laughs> the Disney movies gave me depression. And one more alien. I remember this guy. <laughs> what a weird looking alien. Hammerhead was envisioned by artist Ron Cobb as a water creature who could also breathe air or suck up a drink. <laughs> huh. But then they changed his design almost entirely. All right, that's two more packs down, and still we have not seen. So that was for Justin Horta. I thought we already did a Justin Horta. Huh. I, we must have done a Justin Horta that wasn't Star Wars. Yeah, here we are. Oh, you were doing Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> How's it going, Justin? Justin, I like your cards. I hope you have fun looking at them and reading them when they uh, arrive at your home, okay? These little cards, can they've got a little story on the back of each one that explains the artwork. I think that's pretty cool. Patrick Diaz says, can I get two Star Wars and one live custom? You got it, Mr. Patrick Diaz. So you're going to get a live custom that comes with this bonus pack. Do -do 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 -do. You got Flapple. Oh, Mr. Now, he also wants the two Star Wars, so let's go grab those. Show Booba? We're going to show Booba. Now, what do we got in this Lost Thunder? Boba Fett acquired his armor for Jango Fett, founder of the Mandalorians. Ah, it's a cold pack. Son of a bleeblop. But maybe you will pull the sketched or hollow card out of these. Uh, music playing in the background for anyone who's just joining in. This is Star Wars Game Boy music for the original Game Boy. Like the fat gray Game Boy. Not even Game Boy Color. All right. So we can start moving a little faster because we, we've seen a lot of these already. More droids. Very cool. I'm getting a better concept of these packs. These are all like artworks from various artists. Okay. There's the Red Guard. The Emperor's Royal Guard, silent, statuesque, and utterly mysterious. This crimson-robed sextet appears only briefly in Episode 6. Nevertheless, there is an, is an intimidating presence, as befits their station. Hmm. The Emperor's Guard. Look at this! It's Amidala! I didn't know she was in the old shows. Okay, here's another artwork. It's like a cover artwork, huh? Oh, I kind of recognize this guy. This is like the, the doctor or something, right? I'm trying to remember. Yeah. A surgeon droid. Here's the Emperor. Oh! R2-D2. The Fets weren't Mandos, were they? Be banished to the YouTube Star Wars rabbit hole until you learn. Speaking of rabbit holes, what the heck are these? <laughs> what? Go ahead and put that away. <laughs> the If droids can frolic, frolic, that's what R2-D2 is doing in this painting by Bunny Carter. Used for a drawing board greeting card that wishes, hope this special day is full of wonder for you. 
It's too funny. All right, pack number two. Here we go. <laughs> There's a very concerned looking, uh, concerned looking Luke Skywalker. It's the little scout droids taking a shot at him. Here's Yoda, and he's got gray hair like an old man. I'm trying to remember the process they used to kind of design him. I watched a TV show that kind of explained it, but that was when I was I, w I was like a kid when I watched it. See, 3PO. Who's this guy? I don't recognize this guy. I feel like now I do. An early Rancor monster had dangling grasping trunks to hold victims before devouring them. Huh. Like Kulu. What is this music, man? <laughs> there you go. You hear a little bit of Star Wars in there? The Star Wars holiday special was more like Vaudeville than it was like the film. Among those appearing were Art Kearney, who dressed as a woman to play Chef Gormanda. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. And finally, one more card of Darth Vader. Wow, they really like to draw Darth Vader. He was very popular. That's it, guys. When you're making a story, you got to have a really good bad guy. So, Mr. Patrick Diaz Depis with a P. Let's go find your bag. Just like Snoke. Snoke was such a good bad guy. Paul Bradley. Patrick Hammock. He says, I have a bag. Here it is. Patrick Diaz Depis. Thank you, Patrick. What's your favorite Star Wars movie? My favorite? Uh, ooh, good question. Well, it would probably go something like the, the original trilogy would probably be better than the prequels. And then I would, I like the prequels a lot better than the sequels. And the sequels just get like an F for me. They're so bad. They're like shockingly bad. Next up, we have Mr. Mike's side, three Star Wars packs. You were chosen. You were the chosen one, Anakin. Okay, so we can do two for you. We'll just adjust that. So this is say 183 now. Wow, it's been 42 minutes. And we've been going through these packs very slow. There we go. So, Mr. Mike's side, let's get you two of these Star Wars packs. Mr. Mike's side. Sneep. Sneep. Everyone wants to crack at the Star Wars boosters. All right. Look at that little guy running. Ewoks look like little fur balls, but these simple permanent beings are strong-willed, fiercely loyal, and attuned to the environment of Endor. <laughs> what do we have here? Another artwork? Another cover art? Oh, this is definitely the Jawas or something like that? No, this is this looks like a emperor. Uh, I'm sorry, an imperial um machine for fighting. The all-terrain armored transport, or ATAT, -AT, was initially visualized as a futuristic tank for snow troops. It evolved into the mighty four-legged armored walkers that caused great damage to the rebel base. Huh. Wow, so this was the original ATAT. -AT. Wow, man. It shows you creativity is not something you can... Creativity is really interesting because these are way better. These are so much better than a simple tank. And somebody who's less creative might have just gone with this. Oh, man. It makes me think of video games. You, you you underestimate how important having a good artist is for a video game. Another cover art? Oh, what is this? I guess that's Leia. I like her whole, like, uh, Amazonian sort of, like, leopard skin outfit here. Or maybe it's not. Maybe that's just metal. I would love to draw the Star Wars characters in their remote worlds far away from the limits of our galaxy. Reflects Esteban Moroto. <laughs> Who's this? Another Ewok. Ewoks are just smaller Chewbacca's. Here's C-3PO and R2-D2. And one more of these guys. What is this guy? Hey, that's me. It went to my live stream next. That's no good. I don't want it to autoplay my live stream. I'm the one streaming. Come on, YouTube, get it together. How does YouTube not know I'm the one streaming?
Oh, oh, he's from the cantina scene. Oh, okay. Get it together, YouTube. Now, hold on. Now I think about it, they're just gonna do it again. So we'll jump to the beginning of the OST for the Star Wars soundtrack. Now here we go. <gasps> is this a special card? No, this isn't a special card. I thought it was. All right, we gotta start speeding it up a little bit, guys, because a huge line is gonna form, and it's gonna be really terrible for people who just wanna open up regular cards, okay? So we got R2-D2. We're starting to recognize a lot of these artworks. Now, of course, none of these are really rare. These are just common and commons, aren't they? The only really rare ones are the ones that are etched and hollow, and most of these are just simple artworks. Oh, I like this one. Hold on. What's this? Damn. Damn, that's some booty cheek in that image from 1993. That's a lot of booty for 1993. It was Topps Comics Editor-in-Chief Jim Salakrup who suggested the vile, bloated job of the hut as a possible subject for Sam Keith to illustrate. Why not, Keith responded. In 40 years, I'll look like that myself. <laughs> in 40 years, I'll look like that myself. Oh my God, that's funny as hell. All right, and then another Bobo Fett. Okay, so that's the best card so far. <laughs> so gross. Let's see, who was that for? That was for Mike's side, right? Mike's side. All right, Mike's side, let me find your bag. Here it is. I did it, says Mike's side. <laughs> do, do, do. Sven Krill says, two Star Wars, two NBA Chronicles, and a live custom. Back in the UFC box, I think. Okay, sounds good. So this is for Sven Krill. We're gonna start with the live custom. Do, 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 do. And I'm afraid it's cold. Sorry about that, Sven. We're gonna get you two Star Wars packs. And two NBA Chronicles. Make sure I don't mess this up. Here we are, Chronicles. We got Chronicles and Contenders, and the Contenders and Chronicles look very similar. So we'll start with the Chronicles this time. Are you worried about flooding? Uh, not at all. They actually control the height of the water because it's a dam. And on top of that, I live on a very steep hill. So the hill would have to come down and... The hill would have to come down and... Uh, I'm sorry, the water would have to raise up really high to get up over that hill. So, and that's just not going to happen. Zion Williamson. Ooh. That's what Zion Williamson rookie. Here's Eric Paschal. Jason Tatum, Employee of the Month. And Cam Reddish. Ooh, very holographic. See, now they just throw hollows in every freaking pack, man. Guess in some of these older sets, it was hard to get a hollow. Jackson Hayes. Oh, you know, maybe the card companies kind of discovered that they had to, like, make their cards more and more and more impressive every time. I'm out of penny sleeves. You guys will need to wait a second. I need to grab some more. And it's about time for me to order more penny sleeves. I can tell already. I love my man, Jason Tatum. What? <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. We're gonna have a long night again. Did you guys see how long yesterday's live stream was? It was a long live stream. The sun was coming up. Rui Hachimura. There's Rui. Ja Morant. And finally, Zion Williamson. Look at that, guys. That's pretty cool. That's a Zion Williamson rookie. Wow, congratulations. All right. Very nice. How about these Star Wars packs? Whose cards are these? Tell them I live the Celtics. What? <laughs> You're an Iron Man. Star Wars is a success, mister. Yeah, are, are people enjoying the Star Wars cards or are you guys bored of them? Give me some feedback, guys. You want to see more Star Wars cards? Well, of course they're going to be successful if they're only $5 each and they're already vintage. Okay, here's Luke fighting the Rancor. I was watching yesterday's stream, waiting for you to go live, actually. Really? <clears throat> this is a fun surprise. So we've already seen this artwork. 
Here's the Death Star. We've seen this one. So I think if I had to do this Star Wars again, I would not sleeve every card, is the truth. But then again, they're, they're tops cards. They got pointing co corners. So if you wanted to grade any of these, you would want them You would want them all to be penny sleeved. So it's kind of a conflicting thing. But it's obvious to me right away that some of these are not rare. <clears throat> For example, this is just not rare. We've already pulled one of these. Uh, it's, it's a sketch of Luke Skywalker. There's a bazillion sketches of Luke Skywalkers in this set. So there's nothing denoting that he's exceptionally rare and he's showing up over and over. So would I grade him? Well, <clears throat> I, I, I don't think I would. I just don't think I would. What do we have here? We've got... Who are these guys? I see young Akbar schoolmates struggling together with the finer points of this difficult training. In 1969, the prolific... So this is for General Akbar? Or Admiral Akbar? Huh. It's a trap! <laughs> Look at this painting of... Uh, I like the, the, the style of this painting. Mr. Did my order go in? I got the EBT today in the mail. It was pretty good, says Casper the Ghost. Well, thank you very much, mister. Ooh, I love this scene, actually. Yeah, this is really cool. Revenge of the Jedi. What? Wait, Revenge of the Jedi? Isn't it Return of the Jedi? When George Lucas decided that Jedi don't seek revenge, this teaser poster became an overnight collectible. The art direction and design was by Bill Pate. Huh. So originally they were going to call it Revenge of the Jedi. And they changed it to Return of the Jedi. What a good what a good decision, actually. It, it does fit the correct uh, sort of like style. You know what I mean? It just sounds way better right away. Revenge of the Jedi? Jedi? I said Jedi. Another poster. And... This stinky guy. Dude, this guy's creepy as heck. All right. That was for Mr. Sven Krill. Sven! And he says, I'm probably in this box over here. I think you're right, Mr. Sven. Sven, I think you're ready to ship, too, by the way. Here we are, Sven Krill. Sven, you did very good with your Zion Williamson rookie. And you got a lot of lovely Star Wars cards as well. It's a hot case. No foils. That's right. Star Wars be like, let's go back in time. Did my order go in? It probably did. There's a very long wait time tonight, okay? Because of these Star Wars packs. They're very slow, so they take a long time to get through. We're already in uh, 50 minutes in. Evan Shea says, one Star Wars. Who's your favorite Star Wars character? Oh, probably Darth Maul. Yeah, from the, from the prequels, Darth Maul. I like him a lot. Too many Star Wars, says James O. <laughs> Sneep. Well, we'll be done with it pretty soon. It's one box. If we get another box of this, we'll go much faster. Okay, we've got Yoda. So we're still waiting to see a really hot pull come out, aren't we? Okay, here's for Job the Hut. Oh, this is that moment where Han Solo is being saved from falling into the pit. Return of the Jedi, another poster. Here's a sketch of Han Solo, very cool. What is this? What a strange artwork. Huh. Here's some Hoth stormtroopers hanging out with each other. Probably dating. And this stinky guy. What the heck is he? I don't remember this. Oh. Oh. It's a Gamorrean guard. I know the Gamorrean guards. That must have been an early concept. So Evan Shea with the E. And uh, you have a big bag, so you're over here. Mr. Evan. Thank you, Evan. If I bought five of the ETBs, would you throw in... Would you throw an extra for free? An extra ETB? I certainly would not, because they're very expensive to ship. And uh, there's just no reason for me to do that. But I appreciate the offer, though. They're, they're just so expensive to ship. You know, they're already sort of like... They're like this close to me just not wanting to do it. Just dumping them in a big box and selling, sending them off to like a bulk buyer. 
Okay, we've got Andrew Mololan who says two Star Wars packs, please. I got it back. You got it. Here we go. Yeah, what I could do with them is just send the whole thing off to a book buyer and it would actually be pretty easy to do that. You ready? So two packs, Andrew Malolan. Andrew, I think these are gonna be the lucky packs. Sneep. You ready? I know you're ready. This is it, this is the pack with the sketch in it. Yeah, let's sleeve them up. I was gonna be like, I don't wanna sleeve every one of these up. <laughs> Sleeving every single card up is actually very time consuming for the uh, flow of the stream. Here we go, we've got the Star Wars poster. Here's Darth Vader. Imagine if I if I penny sleeved every single Pokemon card that we open. <laughs> Take us centuries to get through all those cards. Okay, Han Solo on uh, Dagobah. Here's the Rancor again, and the artwork of Darth Vader. Pack number two. Yeah, we've probably opened all of like 20 packs of cards, and it's been one hour, so we can't do this. It can't take this long. It's Leia. Dude, that's probably a good card, actually. That card's probably valuable. The Leia cards do go for money. Okay, we got Han Solo. Does he have a... That's the lightsaber, huh? Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. I tell you what I can do, actually. I could probably slip them back into the little tinfoil holder that they were originally in. I'm sorry, guys, but I think we've opened about 20 packs of... Uh, no, probably not 20. We've probably opened close to about 15 packs of Star Wars, and it's been a full hour. We can't We can't do this. We can't sleeve every card. It's taking too long. So this goes to Mr. Andrew Maloland. I'll sleeve up not notable cards like this one right here. So, Mr. Andrew, would I grade this? I very likely would grade this. I'd grade a, a Princess Leia card, and that would probably be worth some something, okay? But all these other cards are clearly... Uh, they're all mass printed and there's a bazillion of them out there probably. We're looking for the rare ones. So let's start going a little faster. Probably some guys waiting for their cars to be open and they're gonna end up waiting three hours if I don't speed up. <laughs> these are just $5 packs of uh, Star Wars. They're not particularly expensive like a $700 pack of Pokemon. Ah, here we are, Andrew Malolan. All right. So we don't sleep these up anymore. They just go back in there little hollow foil holder. It's kind of a nice though. You get to keep the hollow foil holder too, right? So there's a kind of a upside to it. All right, let's see. I don't know if that's a very big deal. Hey, mister, give me two of those packs of Star Wars. You got it. So, yeah, we gotta start going faster. This is taking too long. <laughs> Anthony Roberts. Thanks for joining, Mr. Anthony. Sneep. One and two. There you go, Anthony. All right, on pack number one, we got Greedo, Luke, Planet Hoth, a cover art, Seek 3PO, Early Rancor, Darth Vader, and another Early Rancor. Did you get, really? Did you just get two of the same card in the same pack? Wow. <laughs> Don't know how I feel about that. I'd be like, hey. <laughs> Ooh, mister, what's up? Slither in that butt. We have a little Star Wars tonight. All right, pack number two. You ready? This slimy guy. Dark Empire, the Wookiee family, R2-D2. Uh, the henchman for Mr. Uh, Jabba the Hutt. Leia. A picture of a rebel... What am I trying to say? A rebel fighter flying an air uh, spaceship. X-wing fighter? Pilot? I think pilot's the word I was looking for. A rebel pilot. There we go. Haha. -ha. All right. And these go back in here. All right. Nothing wild in those packs either. Those. Are, that's for Anthony Roberts. Let's go find Anthony Roberts' bag. Mr. Anthony, these are not the packs I'm looking for. <laughs> Arturo, Anthony Perez, Alexander Ross. Hmm. He didn't say if he had a bag. Don't stress yourself with time. We chillin'. Yeah, we have to go much faster. Uh, we have taken an hour to open all of about almost 20 packs, and those are just $5 packs. We can't spend an hour opening $5 packs. 
<laughs> if they're not really that, uh, if they were something like really valuable, we could take all day, I don't mind, but if they're worth like five bucks, he says, I do have one. You got a spare bag now, Mr. Anthony. So you got two bags. Just tell me that you have two bags and I will combine them whenever it's time to ship, okay? So I'm just gonna get moving. We basically need to catch up on an hour of being behind. Number two. Sweet. How do you know it says PSA grades? I'm looking to grade Mexican Soccer League. Uh, I think if you send the card in, they'll, they'll decide if they want to grade it. I think it's as simple as that. Next up, we got Carlos Rivera, who says one Star Wars pack. And he says, I should have a $12 credit, says Carlos. Mr. Carlos, you do. Yes, you do, Mr. Carlos. You have 12 bucks. You ready? Here it goes. Snip. All right, Carlos, maybe you'll get the rare one. Okay, we've got the Holiday Special Wookiee, Boba Fett, C-3PO, Boba Fett, Obi-Wan. All right, cool. So not the hot pack. That is a cold pack. I snip the size of this so that this slides in very easily. There we go. This goes right off to Mr. Carlos. Carlos, how's it going, Carlos? Carl, Carl, Big T, Bryce. So I don't think you're in there. Read it again, says Geek Adwa. Read what again? I think I want to change the music too. We want some better music. So this was fun, the Game Boy Star Wars music. I like that. But let's get some nice music in here. <laughs> ah. Oh, that's like relieving. All right. So Mr. Carlos Rivera, you're just getting a new bag. Same deal. Big T says, you see my order. RuneScape theme. Mr. Big T, I, I saw your order earlier. I know you're in there. Uh, the reason you're asking why hasn't it been my turn yet is because we're going extremely slow uh, because of how we were handling these packs. But now, he's saying two packs and an Eevee. Think about it for a second. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I think that's fair, Carlos. Let's do it. That's fair, Carlos. So here's your your second pack and your Eevee. Carlos had a $12 credit with me. He was probably making sure he had the credit before he could spend it, guys. All right, so I'm going to let him have two packs. Here goes. Mr. Carlos, let's just see what happens with the second pack, huh? All right, we got Star Wars, Princess Leia. Uh, I can't remember his name. The Goblin. Speed racing. All right, there you go. That's your second pack. I appreciate that, mister. Thank you for letting me use up your store credit there. Whew. Here comes the foil snipe. Luckily not, actually. And if he had sniped it, I would have felt a little bad for the next guy. So I was, you know, obviously I can't avoid it. It's just he either gets it or he doesn't. It's just random. Uh, but I know it would have caused a conflict. The guy would have been like, hey, he can't cut in line like that. He didn't request it. That's what would have happened. And then people would have been like, well, he only asked for it because he knew. He knew it was a high chance. So I have to deal with that kind of stuff every now and then. <laughs> you, you have no idea. Uh, in my private messages on Discord, I'll get some real nasty messages sometimes. Nathan Longoria says, two, Star Wars. Hey, you gave that person that pack and it ruined it for me. It's like, Ooh. I don't know what's coming out of the next pack. <laughs> All right, here goes. So Nathan Longoria. Mr. Nathan, is your two packs of Star Wars? Ooh. I'll get guys who'll just contact me and they'll just uh, spam the N-word over and over in my... Oh, look at that. We haven't seen this one yet. Oh, the Imperial Guard and Obi-Wan Kenobi. They'll do stuff like that, just nasty stuff. It's not like, it, uh, it's not like I'm not used to it at this point. I've been doing YouTube for like a long time now, so I've seen everything. Nothing phases. Oh! You got a hit. There it is. Woo! All right, so this one was flipped upside down, was it? Look at that. This is a valuable card. And you will want to grade that one. Okay, what else? We got the troops. Darth Vader. All right, so a lot of artworks that we've already seen. That was for Nathan Longoria. Mr. Nathan, I do recommend grading that. You'll want to grade that with PSA as soon as they open up their cheaper grading tiers. There we 
There we go. These Star Wars take forever. Well, they they won't now because we're going much faster now. They're taking the normal amount of time now. Mr. Keith Craver figured out the fake pour in. Check Discord. Sounds good. Well, Mr. Keith, either way, it's on the way. Uh, here, I'll check the Discord real fast. Let's see. Keith Craver says... He says, it's mine. I remember getting out of a jungle pack from the large. Well, have no problem. I already shipped it. Or have no fear. Did I say have no problem? Have no fear. I already shipped it. So, Mr. Nathan Longoria. Where would we place Mr. Nathan Longoria? I feel like you definitely have a bag. Have we shipped you recently? Let's see. He says, I need a new bag. Okay, we got it. New bag for Mr. Nathan. Yeah, so you pulled... This is a one of two cards that you get out of a box, and it features a pretty cool artwork of R2-D2 and Luke Skywalker. That is definitely gradable material. Mr. Nathan. There we go, Nathan Longoria. You're going in the end box. Next up, we've got Alexander Hewitt, who says, good evening. I'll keep that Misty's Tears. And he says, Tears Magic moving for Oh, 10 Team Up and two Star Wars. All right, so we'll grab you two Star Wars. Here they are. Mister, were you a Star Wars fan? Uh, probably in the casual sense, I was a big Star Wars fan. Uh, but apparently I didn't have all these names super memorized. I thought I would have the names more memorized, but now that I'm opening up the packs, I'm like, whoa, man, I'm struggling with these names. <laughs> so this is for Alexander Hewitt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for Mr. Alexander. Oh, look, you missed one. That's the one with the Charizard in it. <laughs> All right, you ready? Alexander. Whoa, that's a big order, man. Snip. And snip. Fighting for that, fishing for that magic carp, says Alexander Hewitt. Yeah, oh, I know what you're talking about. There's the Magikarp Whale Lord alternative art in Hyper Rare in here, right? So let's see what you get. Cold. Cold. Charizard. Oh, man, you just can't go wrong with the team upset because it's an easy Charizard pull. Cold. Erica. Here's Snorlax Eevee. Ooh. Pokemon's so much better. I agree. I really like the Pokemon cards. Star Wars, um, it's definitely very different. Here's Dragonite. Doesn't have the familiarity of Pokemon. Pokemon's very well, like, established in a way as a, as a trade tradable card. Whereas with Star Wars, you're just kind of looking at it going, oh, that's a cool piece of paper. <laughs> doesn't have that, doesn't have that, uh, asset feeling, I guess. It's hard to describe, actually. All right, so out of your packs, you pull Charizard and Snorlax Eevee. Not bad. Now, he also has two packs of Star Wars, and we're expecting one more hot pack to come out. Adam says, I like the Star Wars, too. Sneep. And Sneep. Well, I like Mr. Longoria's holographic Luke Skywalker. That, that was really cool. And uh, I expect that one to probably be very gradable and be worth something. So this is probably gradable. Okay. That artwork's probably a pretty fair artwork for grading. Okay, just pop that back in. And what do we got over here? Oh my God, it's the second hollow. So both hollows have come out. Very cool. Wow. So that's the C3PO and Chewbacca. Yeah, if more of the cards look like this, I'd say that is very collectible. Um, wow, that's fantastic, guys. Well, we can pull both of them out and look at them now. So these were the two hollow etched cards. You know, it's interesting. They almost look like full arts. They're not just like holographic. They actually have a bit of a texture to them. So I would expect these cards to be worth around 50 bucks. And if they grade 10, I would hope that they would sell for over 100. Very lucky because you also picked up the Slave Leia card and people will very likely buy this card just because it features uh, an iconic woman in a bikini. And that's all it takes sometimes. Who's this guy? We haven't seen this one. Yoda as a gremlin. Huh. So this was uh, maybe a concept for Yoda. 
Han. Okay, cool. So there were still some cards we hadn't seen yet. Yeah, that's good, and that's good. You got two gradable cards out of your packs, and those packs were only 10 bucks. That's uh, actually very cool. Again, these, uh, these Star Wars packs are from 1993. You got to appreciate that part. They're from 1993, and they're already really old, that means. These are vintage cards. I mean, there's no way, uh, no way around it. You just pulled a really old 1993 card. And this goes to Alexander Hewitt. So, Mr. Hewitt, where do we have your bag last, Mr. Hewitt? Did you need, did you need a new bag? He says, he didn't say anything about a new bag. So, let's go looking for Alexander Hewitt. Got any Espeon slabs for sale? Uh, probably not. Andrew Amos Espeon slabs. Let me think about it. I don't have a lot of Espeon slabs. Adam Mundorf, Anthony Deloa. I have a baggie somewhere. Somewhere. All right, let's go find your somewhere bag. <laughs> Probably over here. Adam Vizen, Alexander Hewitt. So Mr. Alexander and Mr. Nathan Longoria, I highly recommend getting these two cards graded. There we go. Uh, you know, if you don't if you don't feel like waiting for PSA to open, you could also make me an offer to sell them to me. All right, and we'll move on now to Mr. Justin Overdune. Can I get two Star Wars and two Final Fantasy Opus 5? You got it. Two Star Wars. Oh, the box is nearly empty now. I didn't notice that. And two Opus. Opus, Opus. Which one did he say? He wanted Opus 5? Two Final Fantasy Opus 5. All right, we've got one. And I can just find another. Two. Ouch. <laughs> Just bumped my toes. So here we are. Woo! Get a Star Wars Master Work Hobby Box. Man, I ordered right away. Says focus. Tis Channel is my forever home. Tis Channel. Snip. <laughs> Snip. All right. Mr. Justin, over to you. Let's see what kind of cards you get anyways. Maybe you get one of those Slave Leia cards. Huh. Here's another Yoda artwork. Wow, I like this one. This is actually really cool. Look at the expression on Obi-Wan Kenobi's face. That's a pretty complex expression. <laughs> He's got a giant wrench. Not very iconic. Here's a... Uh, I don't remember his name. I do know his name. Come on, what's his name? Of course I know his name. Oh, what's his name from the Cloud City? Why am I, why am I forget Lando? It's Lando Calrissian. There we go. I got it on my own. All right, and here's the Dr. Droid. Isn't it funny when you're trying to remember something and the word's like right on the tip of your tongue? Lando Calrissian. Han and Lando. There we go. Here's another pack where we have... What is this? Is this just concept artwork? The first artist hired by George Lucas was responsible for the early look of the Star Wars universe. But as the script evolved, the characters changed and the artwork was constantly updated. Wow. Wow, very cool. Okay. Oh! Yeah, so any of these Slave Leia cards are probably gradable. That's, I, I know it's... it's Sounds kind of funny, but it's just probably true. Also, here's C-3PO giving R2-D2 a birthday cake. That's pretty cool. Where's Baby Yoda? <laughs> I want Baby Yoda. who's in the Mandalorian. All right. Did we already look at this one? We did. I apologize. We shouldn't have pulled that back out. All right, but it fits very nicely. Okay, how about these Final Fantasy cards? You pull... Oh, that's pretty good right off the bat. You got the wool hollow. I think there's a legendary version of this hollow that is the best pull in this set, or one of the best pulls. Now we're looking for any other legendaries or any other waifus. All right. And in pack number two, you've got Royal Ripeness. Ugh. Faulkner. All right, cool. So Royal Ripeness is your other pull, mister. Woo. That is for Justin, Justin Overdune, Mr. Justin. These Star Wars packs are also filling up the table really fast. Let's go find your name. I would trade you the Slave Leia and the Chewbacca foil for five team up, says Mr. Hewitt. Let me think about that. Yeah, I'd probably do that. 
I was gonna say, I, I thought that the raw card was probably valued around 50 bucks. All right, here we are. Woohoo! Oh, it was Mr. Hewitt's. All right, Mr. Hewitt's. Mr. Hewitt's. Let's get you five packs of Teemo. So here's that last pack. And you're gonna need four more from a fresh box. Two, three, and four. Here we are. Good luck, Mr. Alexander. Mr. Alexander, here goes. That was the one I needed to buy. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. All right. Oop. Pack number one. That's cold. Pack number two. Containing another Snorlax Eevee. You know, you really can't go wrong with these Snorlax cards. People love Snorlax and people love Eevee. It's like such a strong, you know, in terms of collectability. There's another Blastoise. Blastoise Hollow. So it's actually very similar to your previous round of Charizard and Snorlax, except you got these two in just five packs. And the very last pack, it is cold. I'm sorry, mister. That means that last pack in the box was not a special pack. They often feel like they're going to be the special pack. Uh, but that's very interesting. You open about 15 packs of these. You pull Charizard, Blastoise, and two Snorlaxes. And the Snorlaxes are all, always a very solid pull, in my opinion. Yeah, the Snorlaxes. All right, so give me a minute here. I'm gonna put these in a sleeve so that I don't smush them because I know myself. And if I just leave them laying on the table, I'm bound to smush them. All right, and we'll throw these off to the side. So OSM is next and OSM says two Star Wars. I think I have a $6 store credit. Uh, It doesn't say you have one. It says you ordered live shipping though. If so, one chili grain. New bag if you didn't ship mine from yesterday. All right, let's get you two Star Wars, mister. So, Mr. OSM, I didn't hang up a... I didn't hang anything up suggesting you had any store credit from live shipping, but you didn't do it. Oh, true, but I see what you're saying then. Well, what I can do for you then, Mr. OSM, I'll go ahead and refund you the $6. And then what I will do is place you in line for regular shipping. Give me a minute. Give me a second. Actually, I think I have... So you are LS? All right. So I'm over here in the Please Ship channel. LS is OSM. Ship his bag international. I'll say ship his cards. All right. So $6 credit going into a pack of Chilling Rain. Sweet. All right. And let's see what you get. Mr. OSM, you could get a one-pack snipe. Let's see what happens. Oh, it is the Gengar Hollow. That's pretty cool. The Gengar. Woo. Now for these Star Wars, let's get you a hot Star Wars card. Series one, huh? Very interesting. Sneep. And sneep. All right. You pull. Oh, man, look at that. Wow, that's actually pretty cool. So these are the, uh, what do they call these? The sand person, right? So you got Jawas and sand persons, and he looks so different with the giant cloak. Huh. Star Wars Galaxy, here's the Emperor. <laughs> They're in the trash compactor. The mercenary scene, another Slave Leia. There's an awful lot of these Slave Leia cards in this set. Sand person? Man, that was not a very complicated name, was it? They're sand people. <laughs> people of the sand. All right, what do we got here? We've got C-3PO. Oh. C-3PO. Mercenaries. Are these mercenaries? I think it's just various droids. The Emperor, Leia. The Doctor droid. All right, cool. What's up with this Leia drawing? It doesn't look like the actress. Does that mean it was drawn before then? 
Look, it says 1981 on that. Leia. Leia as a pinup was probably the last thing audiences expected in the chaste Star Wars universe, but in Return of the Jedi, the princess's plan to steal into Jabba's palace in disguise and rescue Han Solo is thwarted. As revenge, Jabba dresses her up as a dancing girl to replace Ula, whom he has dispatched to Rancor Dom. <laughs> I love it. It's so funny. All right. Cool. Uh, and so this goes to Mr. OSM. Mr. OSM, did I put your bag over here? Where'd I put your bag, Mr. OSM? Let's see. OSM's bag went up top. Here you are, Mr. OSM. Ooh, this is starting to feel pretty heavy. All right. How long's the wait time, guys? Is it real long? Now we have Mr. Big T's Exotic. He says four Star Wars boosters. All right, we're going to get two of them. And Mr. Big T, I believe you did say to give you a shiny face instead of a refund, so here you are. Focus Scrub says, uh, hold on. He says, I paid for shipping already. Get it out at your earliest. Uh, Mr. Focus Scrub, could you contact me on Discord? So the way shipping works, the way shipping works on this channel, if you aren't aware, well, first of all, you should be aware. There's instructions how shipping works in our instructions. So the way it works is, you can get in line for shipping in the Please Ship channel, or you can order live shipping. And we do this for a very important reason, is so that you don't order three packs and then have me ship, and then order another three packs, and then have me ship, and then order another three packs and have me ship. That's how cards have worked uh, in the past why I didn't have a system like this, and it doesn't work that way anymore. So now the way it works is you, you'll have to get in line in the Please Ship channel, and that's how shipping works. James says, I, I ordered 63 minutes ago. I'm OSM, gotcha. Oh, okay, so, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know you were OSM. Sleep. There's so many YouTube names, I don't have them all memorized. Sleep. Yeah, so that's why we have live shipping compared to uh, the Please Ship channel. So OSM, here's a great example. You order some live shipping and then the next day you're like, I'll order a few more packs. So the thing is, I don't want you to miss out on combined shipping benefits. And especially for international shipping, that's a really important thing, right? Because international shipping costs me about $14 and costs you about $14 for a total of about $28. So we try to avoid all multiple shipping that we can. And we do that by having your collection hang out over here. Your, you know, your collection is just hanging out over here on this table. Uh, so we try to get as much combined shipping done as possible. Now you can skip the combined shipping by doing live shipping for six bucks. But the reason that is six bucks is to pass that sort of like hesitation off to you. You know, you don't want to spend six bucks. So that's the whole purpose of it. Uh, and then the please ship channel, you have a little wait period and the wait period makes sure that you don't add anything else to your bag. All right, so this is, oh, I'm sorry. This is for Mr. Big T Exotic. Let's see what we got, Mr. Big T Exotic. I need to go make a video on this, on uh, how the whole channel works. All right, we got the, tie, uh, not TIE Fighters. These are the X-Wings. Right? What are they called? They're called X-Wings, right? I think they're called X-Wings. Here's the Wookiees, the droids, a love scenario, the giant worm that they fly out of, Luke with the lightsaber, and Leia, but she's not in a bikini. Hmm. But she's not in a bikini. TIE Fighters? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I love this music. This is Lethal Lava Land from Mario 64, and it's one of my favorite Mario 64 songs. Yeah, I really like this one. The edges are like so crimped over here that the cards don't want to move. Ah, but they'll move now, now that the edges are snipped. Thigh Fighters? Here's Princess Leia as a mercenary in disguise. The Cantina, the Assassin Robot early concept, Poster George Lucas. <laughs> Seems so brilliant in that image of himself. All right, there you go. Did you ever get my custom done, mister? What's up, Estuardo? It's been a real slow night because we've been going through these Star Wars Galaxy cards kind of slow because we just got them. Uh, <clears throat> but things are speeding up now, and I'm sure that we will get through them faster now. All right, Mr. Big T, that was a cold pack of Shining Face. I apologize for that, but that's okay. It was just one pack. And let's find your bag. It's been less than an hour, probably still in queue. Yes, the, the line tonight's pretty long, guys. I apologize for that. Carl, Carl, big T. Wait in line 69 seconds, don't worry. 
Here we are, Mr. Big T Exotics bag. Yeah, everyone's bag's getting real fat from these Star Wars packs, man. Cool. Next up, we got a refresh. Woohoo! That's the first refresh since when we started. That was 85 minutes ago. That means we were going at a snail's pace, which is not good for this live stream because I usually have to go at lightning speeds to keep up with the line so that you guys don't wait over an hour. <laughs> so 85 minutes and our first refresh. <laughs> this music. This music doesn't care. What other music we got? We got Hazy Cave. I can listen to Hazy Cave for hours too. All right, so... We're gonna go find Mr. Big T's order. That would be the checkpoint. That's where we left off. I'm seeing lots of names here, okay? Here it is, Big T. Next up, we got Devin Kawamura. What's up, Devin? One live and two, Shiny Star V. Mr. Devin Kawamura, could this be it? Do -do 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 -do. Ah, that's a cold one, I'm sorry, Devin. I'm glad you didn't order two and got two cold ones. But we don't know if the second one's cold. It could be the hot one. Did you like Indiana Jones? Not really, actually. A lot of people really liked Indiana Jones, and I just thought that Indiana Jones was okay. There was Raiders of the Lost Ark where their faces all melt off and explode at the end. That was pretty cool. That was actually really cool. I liked that. Zation, that was like from a scary movie cool. That's probably why I liked it so much. Cramorant, cram it. And second pack. Articuno, yeah, Han Solo as a scoundrel, he, he does that role really well. And he was good in Indiana Jones. His acting's always pretty good. Well, that's, that actually, it depends on what movie, I suppose. But he, he did really well in Indiana Jones. You got a cute little Q font. That is an adorable Q font for Mr. Devin Kawamura. Devin, how's it going, Devin? Devin returns. Oh, man, you got this Pikachu last night, that gym Pikachu. Did you guys like those pack breaks? Because we could do pack breaks on more expensive expensive packs than what we currently did. We could do a really, really expensive pack break if you wanted. You guys want an expensive pack break? Next up, we got Ry Ricardo Lycia. He says, for Star Wars, I might need a bag or it might be, it might be the sports section. All right, so Mr. Ricardo, there was a limit of two packs per person to make sure more people got a shot because I only had one box. So I'm gonna refund you real fast. You're gonna get a refund for two of the packs. I want to play some Mario right now. What's behind door number one? This is Bull City. Sweet. All right. Shoot, where were we? <laughs> we were helping. Did this like reset? Hold on, I got to scroll way down, I think. It's because I did the refund. All right, there's Devin. Car Here it is. Ricardo Lycia <laughs> for Star Wars. So you're getting two of the Star Wars, and we're going to pull you a sexy slave Leia. So here are my thoughts on the Star Wars cards. After the two hollow or etched cards, the next best cards are going to be any card with the slave Leia, which is Princess Leia in a bikini. And then after that, I don't really know if any of the particular cards are especially good, you know? Like, these are... <laughs> How about this one? Is she crying? It looks like she's crying here. So there's lots of cool cards. Oh, like like this. This is pretty funny, right? <laughs> like you could probably grade anything you wanted to grade. Oh, it's Pizza the Hut. Okay, cool. You could grade anything you wanted to grade out of here. They all look really cool. Well, that was a really clean package. The one with Jabba, a slave girl. Okay, the doctor. That's Luke's hand. Oh, really like black and white etchings. Those are really neat. This is really cool. Early concept art for AT-AT. Oh, here we go. And so this one would be probably one that you would grade. is Princess Leia riding an iguana, giant iguana in a, in a sexy outfit. And it's just how it is. It's like this card right here, the, the Naked Misty card. Why does it sell for like $700? Somebody explain. It's, it, it is explainable, but it's like, it's, it's terrible, the reason. It's just because guys are... Uh, Guys are gross. <laughs> That's where the money's going to go. Ricardo Lycia. Guys like girls. That is the reason. Lopez Russ. Slave Leia, Naked Misty. 
I'm a realist, guys. I don't pretend that those aren't going to go for more money than, let's say, Ash Ketchum. <laughs> so he says he thinks he might be in the sports section. Let's go check over there real fast. She could ride my iguana. <laughs> oh, my God. We got Noel, Michael Manuen, Jonathan Morris, James Gower, Ricardo Lopez. That's not Lycia. Got to be careful with these Ricardos. Their names are very similar. Okay, we've got Sven Krill, Anthony Power, and Nick Wieg. So I did not see a bag for you. Oh, actually, there is one more box. We don't touch this box very often. Shazox, Nicholas Lenhart, and this massive box bag for Mr. Marquez that ought to just be shipped out. There's no point in having it over here because it's too large. Here we go, Ricardo Lycia, I found you. You did have a bag, Mr. Ricardo. Woohoo! Your pack had one of these lovely Leia cards in it. Would I grade it? I'm, sure, I would actually consider grading that. You could grade all the cards if you wanted. Some of them seem a bit repetitive. Joshua Maldonado says, two Star Wars packs for Joshua. I told you these sold out and that, oh, look at this. I don't understand. There's one pack, oh, because somebody ordered one pack and made it odd. Okay, so here's the box from 1993. I could sell you the box, but I could sell you the empty box for probably about 25 bucks if somebody wanted this. The box appears to be in decent condition. You can put it on a shelf. It, you know, Pokemon card boxes are just uh, collectible. I don't know if this is collectible, but probably about 25 bucks for that. It's a little pricey. I, you know, I don't know if I'd do it myself. All right, here we go. So Joshua Maldonado. I tell you what I could do. Maybe I could ride in it when we emptied it or something like that. Snip. If my Star Wars didn't make it, can I get team up? Says Jeff Leon. Sounds good, Jeff. We'll get you team up instead. So this is for Joshua. Joshua pulls. Han and Leia. That crazy looking. Oh, look at this. They're playing cards. Jawas. All artworks. Excuse me. All artworks we've seen now. Okay. Whoop. Another artwork for Yoda. So funny. Chewbacca. Han. All right. So these two packs had nothing too wild in them. I'll leave them to you to look at when they arrive at your home, Mr. Joshua Maldonado. I bought the box. All right, the box is sold, guys. Don't touch that box. You know what I could do for you, Mr. Alex PSX? I could also ship your current bag out for you if you wanted me to. John Gomila. Jonas Joshua. Here we are, Joshua Maldonado. All right, Mr. Josh, the sad thing is this bag is going to be just large enough that I think it's going to be too large. Is that... Nope, actually it's not. I take it back. And now we have Trenton Burton, who says two Star Wars. Mr. Trenton, you're getting a $5 refund because you were only going to be able to get this very last pack. So this is for Joshua... I'm sorry, this is for Trenton Burton. This last pack. This must have sold out, like, instantly. But, man, it's been 95 minutes, and we are just now wrapping up that Star Wars box. It can't be that way for $5 packs. That is, uh, that is definitely not worth my time at all. <laughs> all right, so, Mr. Trenton, Star Wars was fun. Hey, you guys let me know. Do you want to see more crazy, interesting hobbies like this, like just random boxes? Like, I always, the way I've always opened cards on this channel is strictly so that you could, like, take the card and grade it and flip it for, like, money. Okay? So it's always been, like, value-based. Oh, there's a Slave Leia. But if you guys just like opening up whatever, and it, it doesn't really matter to you if, if it's valuable or not, you just like to open for fun, we could do something very different. You know, I can think differently about that kind of stuff. I think very carefully about the value of what I'm opening. See, and that's how I've kind of brought that into the channel with me. So that's why I do things like 
oh, we don't offer Pokemon Celestial Storm. It's overpriced. And uh, we don't open up uh, Burning Shadows because it's got the cutting error, right? So I tend to really avoid the things that I think don't have enough value. But if you guys just like to open for fun, maybe I've ignored that that sort of um, area of card opening where it's just like, I don't care what it costs. I'm just doing it for fun. So Trent and Burton, I don't care if I get a, a card that pays back the value of the pack. I just want to open it to see what's in it. You know what I mean? Higher value Star Wars. Ooh, Trenton, this bag is full. Not bag. Here it is, Trenton Burton. This box is full. That's what I mean to say. Is the tea box up top full? Yeah, the tea box up top is pretty full. We do have a problem on the table where all the boxes are a bit too full. All right, Mr. Trenton, I think maybe tonight will be the night, guys. I think what I will do after the live stream, no shipping will be done. I'm going to I'm going to set up an abandoned... I'm going to not abandon, but I'm going to set up a shelf behind me that carries all of the bags that are deemed to be not active, and they're going to be well-organized and well-sorted back there, and then we're just going to take a ton of bags off of this table that appear to just be being ignored. And that should free up tons of room and make it much easier to find people's stuff. Jeff Leon says two, Star Wars. What did he say? He said replace it with the team-up. You got it. One team-up for Mr. Jeff Leon. Mr. Jeff. Ooh, baby. Ooh, mama. Sleep. And, ah, but it's a cold pack. Woo! I apologize, Mr. Jeff. Jeff, we'll have more Star Wars cards. Arturo says, can I get two Star Wars boosters? Mr. Arturo Perez, would you like to open up anything else since you waited all this time in line? Yeah, if you ordered a Star Wars pack and you didn't get it, you're not going to get it because they're sold out. So if you guys would like to replace it with a different pack, you're welcome to do that. I can't do it with live custom packs, but I can do it with pretty much anything else. Stop ordering Star Wars. Poor abandoned Pikachus. Poor Pikachus. While he is trying to answer me, let me go ahead and make a label for Alex. Hey, Alex, which, uh, actually, you know, Alex, you got two addresses. Which address do you prefer? So I don't know which address Alex prefers. The 21 address? Okay. Okay, I see. So that's the other one. Do I still have the other address? What is my preferred pronouns? Mister, that is my preferred pronouns. I might have deleted your other address actually, thinking that I shouldn't use it anymore. So I'll have to get your other address back. All right, and Mr. Arturo Perez is gonna be refunded. I didn't see an answer from him. Mr. Him, Her, <laughs> Sir and Lord. <laughs> Been seeing folks at you for months. I only have one person blocked. Me and Keith, we're on a break from each other. You're on a break? I hope you guys get back together for the children. The children didn't ha The children didn't cause this. It's not their fault. They shouldn't suffer. Next up, we have Sergio Espinoza. He says, one, 2015 Dragon Ball Z Evolution. Sounds good. All right. People are appreciating the 2015 Dragon Ball Zs. And that is a completed box of the Dragon Ball Z. Look at that. Actually, you know, if you want, Mr. Alex, I think I can toss this in with the other box. Get you two boxes <laughs> for the price of one. Technically, the Dragon Ball Z box is pretty old. All right, and you got one evolution pack. Now, these are not always guaranteeing a hollow, so they're very interesting. Oh, man, but you are lucky, and you are picking up a hollow. That's a Android 19. Very cool. They're like the My Little Pony packs. My Little Pony packs, sometimes you get cold packs. Mr. Sergio, congratulations on your good luck tonight. Salvador. Steven. Sergio Espinoza. Woo. Sergio has the best luck. Next up, we got James O'Brien. James says, one box of Shiny Star V. Damn, that's crazy, man. All right, so Alex, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. James is saying the next box is probably the box with the Charizard in it. Let's see what happens, mister. I sent a message on Discord with the address. Sounds good. I need to take some pics of my 20-year-old DBZ cards. That'd be cool. 
People probably appreciate that. 20 years old? That's pretty old. Whew. All right, here goes. For Mr. James O'Brien, one whole box of Shiny Star V. You can't resist. The packs look too good. They look delicious, don't they? Shiny Star V looks awesome. Sneep. Sneep. And snip. <laughs> oh, man. I don't mind him, to be fair. Here goes. We got Urshifu. Indudu. You know, this version of the Indudu does actually look kind of better than the other Indudus, to be honest. I think this might be the best-looking version of Indudu. Next pack. The Reggie. Santa Scorch V Max. Ooh, Santa Scorch. Here's Rilla Boom. Oh, it's Yamper. He's like, look at my butt. All right, you got Shiny Yamper. Yamper Rilla Boom. So, uh, Yamper in Doo Doo, -doo I mean, so far. Score Bonnie Code card. And Santa Scorch V. That's a cold pack. Okay, next pack is Grookey. And you know what else is interesting about these shiny star packs? You actually get three hollows out of every pack. So you get a code card, three hollows, a guaranteed V or V max, and then there's pretty generous pull rate for all of the other cards. Although not Charizard, right? Oh, I see a golden card, so that's probably going to be your big hit here. It is Golden Eternatus of V max. Ooh, very nice. Do you still have a shot at the Charizard? I think you do, actually. I think somewhere in the box, you will either get an Amazing Rare or you will get another Full Art. And when you get that other Full Art, that will be your shot for the Charizard. Here's Galarian Perserker. No, I think that's just Gal Galarian Meowth. I apologize. And uh, so you've gotten your three shiny hollows. Every box has about three of these. I don't know if I typically see four of them. There's the other Full Art. That looks like Careless from here, but it might be Bird Keeper. It is Careless. Bummer. <laughs> Careless is okay, but she is no Charizard, and she is definitely not Skyla Marnie. Okay, here we go. We've got, oh, there you go. Another full art, actually. You did well on this box. This box had three full arts, but it's Eldegoss. Shiny Eldegoss. It's not a bad artwork of Eldegoss. There you go. And last pack. Okay, there's a Blastoise. Blastoise code card and Dragapult V. There you go. Hmm, no Charizard in this box. Probably the next box. Probably the next one. So that's for James O'Brien. What's up, James? James O'Brien, where did we put your bag last? You up in the, just a regular JA box? Trainers don't substitute full arts. Really? Here's James O'Brien's bag. He's got some lovely vintage cards in there, I'm sure. Woohoo! No AR, crazy. What? No Amazing Rare? Yeah, Amazing Rare show up pretty often in these. He got three Full Arts instead, and personally, I like the Full Arts better than the Amazing Rares. All right, so James O'Brien, we're going to place you with Mr. Michael Cusick, because both of you guys are pretty active. So you're on the, the right side of the table. Wes Donini says, 10 Fates Collide and 10 Battle Styles. Oh, you're speaking my language. I really, really like Fates Collide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I gotta get one more. I think you're smart to open Fates Collide just like when you're opening Ancient Origins. It's a really good set. All right. One more pack. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's get these tops ripped. <laughs> Can we get a Lake of the Ozarks ending tonight? What do you mean by that? We had a Lake of the Ozarks ending yesterday when the sun came up. I showed everyone the lake. There was like a, a mist in the background. It was really nice. Hey, mister, where's the Misty card? Wink, wink. What? Sleeve boosters had good pull rates, in my opinion. Well, this is from a case, a fresh case of Fates Collide. The show is good. Ozark says Keith. I didn't like it. 
I, I thought it was just okay. I didn't like it that much. By the end of the third season, or what? I think it was the third season. I was like, this show's so depressing, and what's the point, you know? Is Jason Bateman my neighbor? There is a uh, there is a bar out here called uh, Marty Bird from the Ozark show. Marty Bird's Bar and Grill or something like that. I fell asleep before the gym pack opening last night. Oh, James, you missed it. You got an uncommon Lieutenant Surge's Magnemite, it looks like. And you're going to have to give that card to me, mister. Okay, so we're going to start with your Fates Collide, and then we'll get you some Battle Styles. Mr. Wes Donini. I opened a little bit of this myself on TikTok. It's in my group of highly preferred boosters. All right, what do we got? Carbink. You got the Carbink Break. Dude, that's an ugly Pokemon. I like Metapod way better. I like Metazoo way better. Here's Snubble. Do a stream on the dock one night. Uh, no, that will never happen. First of all, there would be bugs everywhere, especially if we had lights, which we would. And uh, second of all, unless we're streaming on the deck, if we're streaming on the dock, the actual dock by the water, which is what I assume you would want, uh, it, all the trash would just go into the lake. And yeah, even if we were on the dock, I would risk getting trash in the lake. I don't want to do that. Wow, that's a really fancy looking Tyranitar hollow, man. I'm treating that like a hit. I really like the way he looks. All right, you're picking Regirock. Here's a Regirock EX. Ooh, the Regis. But yeah, I mean, I wish I could. I wish I could. Here's Do Ocean. He must be the, like the middle evolution. <laughs> Here's Jigglypuff. All right, you got a Jigglypuff. He's so cute. Jigglypuff Wormadon. Two packs left. Here's Chaos Tower. And it's like the whole card's hollow. So interesting. And finally... Ooh, a Reverse Hollow Snorlax. So we're going to treat that, that as a hit as well. And a Hollow Delphox. No crazy cards that time. No, like, big hits like the Secret Prince. No crazy full arts. Just the Reggie, huh? Reggie and Snorlax is actually pretty solid, in my opinion. But the Carbink Break is a bit of a weak pull. Amongst the Break cards, there's way better Breaks. Mr. West also wanted 10 Battle Styles. You got it, Mr. West. Two, three, four. Yeah, it's on the cold side. You can throw the ones on the left. All right, you'd like a donation? Thank you so much, man. And this is Battle Styles, right? Yes. So, more Battle Styles. We're going to have to come up with the playlist of new music, too. That's another thing to do on this channel. Do you know Nintendo slowly made Snorlax stand up in the video games? In Gen 1, he was on his back. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. It took him years to stand up. <laughs> All right, let's see what other music we can play here. So that's Hazy Maze. Bob on Battlefield. Woo! Wahoo, Mario! Here we go. See, that's what Mario would say. He'd say, here we go. Snip. Snip. This is like the Mario music era on this channel. We have We go through, like, phases of music that we listen to. Like, there was a while where we listened to nothing but Skyrim music. <laughs> it's like Skyrim music every night. And right now we're doing Mario music every night. But I think there's a point where we get, like, kind of bored of it and we move on to, like, a new group or cluster of sounds. It's -a me, Maria. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> Fomantis, Flapple, wow. Yoga VMAX coming. That's right. Yogi Bear VMAX coming. Here's Boofalon. He's just boof, boof, boofing around. Mankey. Honchcrow. Ooh, Honchcrow. Bolton. Horsey Cherum. Ooh. Zubat. We got Zubat. Look at that Zubat. Onyx. 
Oh, there you go, Urshifu Full Art. Very nice. Ooh. <laughs> anti ranitar V. Ooh. He's a little rough one. So that was definitely better than your uh, Fates Collide uh, round, in my opinion. A little more generous with the three hits. Because the other one relied more on, like, hollows. So what was it? It was Snorlax and Tyranitar. These are decent hollows. But, like, other than that, Carbink and Regirock. I don't think... The problem is those Pokemon aren't very popular. But Tyranitar, well, he'll always be cool. Flapple's decent, and really this is a hit. So this full art Urshifu looks really nice. There you go, Mr. Westoni. That was a bit of a large order there, guys. He had 20 booster packs, so we just finished that up. Thank you, Mr. West. Here's your bag. You got a fat bag, Mr. West. After West, we have Eric Lovato. One EV Heroes for Jet Black Spirit. All right, you got it. Eric Lovato. One, two, three, four. Sweet. Mm. Mm. Steep. Mm. See, I'm going to start singing in a minute here. Eric. So addicted to this Mario music. Here's Ente. Oh, Gengar Hollow. So you got the Entire Ente and the Gengar. Those are both nice. Cold. And one Metagross V card. Mister, what's the most valuable card you own and why? Uh, I believe it's Shining Charizard from the Neo Destiny Collection, first edition PSA 10. So he's, he's my most expensive card. I got him back in the day for about $6,000 from a nice guy who told me he had two of them and he didn't need two of them. So he sold it to me for 6,000 cash. And I think they go for like 10 to 15,000. For a little while, they were going as high as 20,000. That was during the Logan Paul box breaks. But all Charizard cards kind of dropped real heavy in price over the last six months. So Eric Lovato, yeah. Of all the cards that fell heavily in price, the ones that fell the most were definitely Charizards. And I think that's because they were being overpriced a little bit. But the crazy thing about Charizard cards is they're still really expensive. So they, they continue to be like the most desirable cards, but they were definitely a little overvalued. And maybe that's kind of what happens, you know? When you think something's a sure thing, it gets overvalued. Kind of like Bitcoin or Ethereum. People are like, oh, it can only go up. And then people overpay for it, you know what I mean? Danny Marks. Danny Marks says, Mr. Two Team Ups, one Final Fantasy Tifa, and one Chilling Rain. Need a new bag. You got it. So two Team Ups. One, two. A Tifa. I really do like Final Fantasy packs. I say it every time, but that is the truth. One Final Fantasy, one Chilling Rain. All right. Can we see it one day? Says Bryant. Yeah, I show it off every now and then. Uh, actually, I showed it off recently on TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, I did a video where I showed off that I almost have a completed Neo Destiny Shining collection. I need the Noctowl and I need the Steelix. You know, if I'd bought the Steelix and Noctowl a while ago in the past, I'd have paid like a third for them what they cost today. It's really sad, man. <laughs> the price is just so high on these cards. Moltres, so no luck on the team up. That is a Moltres. How about the Tifa pack? You got Chaos. He's a hero hollow. And Rosa, huh? Oh, that's a legendary, actually. So this Barthandalus is a legendary. So he is also rare. And from your Chilling Rain, you pull Scroll of Pierce. Scroll of Belly Button Pierce. And that is for Danny Marks, who says he needs a bag. Mr. Danny, sounds good. Here you go, Danny. Mr. Hoarding all the pokies. What are you talking about? I'm hoarding all the Pierce scrolls. Here you go, Danny Marks. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, it really feels like we're moving now. <laughs> Star Wars, uh, you know, if we do Star Wars again, we'll be able to do it much faster because we know what all the artworks look like. Ardenan, Ardenan says one Eevee Heroes and one of them fancy Digimons. You got it. One Evo. Oh, I'm sorry, not Evo. One Eevee. And where are the Digimons? 
Give me a second. <laughs> Digimon slid back. There we go. I must have pushed them. All right. The Digimon slid back, but they're here now. Whew. You don't have a tic-tac-toe? Mister. You don't have a deer tick? Sneep. Uh, well, Mike said might have posted it to my YouTube channel already. Mr. Ardenan, here goes. Agumon and Upamon. I'll trade packs for that, Luke. Hit me up. Is that Mr. Nathan Longoria? That's saying that? Mr. Nathan, are you interested in a trade on the Luke Skywalker? Let me know what you'd like. Okay, Ardenan. Mr. Any new slaps for tonight? Why, yes, all these. These are all free. Ardenan. I have a bag. Let's go find Ardenan's bag. Only fan. <laughs> Adam, Arturo, Anthony, Alexander, Anthony, Andrew, Ardenan. Here we are. Mr. Sniping that loop. Oh, was Guy Godwa not actually Nathan Longoria? See, I don't know everyone's name. For sale, mister. Well, I mean, I, I would actually offer him a trade if he wanted some booster packs or something. Next up, we got Devin Kawamura. He says, two Star Wars, one Eevee Heroes. If I get a hollow, donate. So, Mr. Devin, uh, the Star Wars is out. So, we ran out of the Star Wars, Mr. Devin. Is there something else I can get you? Hold on, give me a second. We'll say that he's got 10 bucks real fast. For sale? I thought a trade. <laughs> okay, there you go, Devin. You got 10 bucks, Mr. Devin Kawamura. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. I'd say we start playing Undertale music now. So, and one Eevee Heroes. I'm willing to trade packs for it, I mean. Oh, so Guy Godwa is not Nathan Longoria, and he's telling Nathan Longoria that he would trade packs for it. I'll buy this Luke Skywalker for $3. Umbreon! Ooh, look at this Umbreon. Umbreon VMAX in one pack. Do, 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 there we go. <laughs> And, Devin, you got a bag right over here. Here we are. Umbreon, that's right. What a nice card. Should bought two packs, says Ardenan. Ardenan, two packs. Umbreon's in the next one. <laughs> Caesar Soto says, for NBA contenders, I need a new bag. You got it. So he wants the NBA contenders. Do I need a fresh box? I think I need a fresh box. All right. Umbriankin Bonds. <laughs> Chilling Rain has been good to me. Goblin, I will buy for $3. Sup, mods. Sup, gobs. <laughs> so, one, two, three. And four. Sweet. Is the Vaporeon still for sale? Says Mike's side. The Vaporeon. Oh, um, I think I actually traded him already. The Vaporeon. I had a lot of luck on Eevees at first. What? Sleep. Sleep. All right, you ready for your contenders? This is for Caesar Soto. All right, so you got all these guys. I don't know if they're valuable, but... I'm pretty sure these guys back here are. So this is going to be Jaron Jackson. And that's 21. Why is it red? Isn't it supposed to say like international or something on it? No, nah, I didn't say that. Interesting. And over here, you've got Luka Donkick. Donchick. Donkick. Pack number two. Okay, we've got... These contenders once again. And one hot card in the back is Denny Avdija. 
Avdesia. Oh my. Randall Wiggins. What's this? This is like a copper color. Game 24. Ooh, very interesting. And draft class Devin Vassell. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, in this case, Stephen Curry is the last pull, the second to last pull, and this card doesn't seem very special at all. But you also pick up LaMelo Ball, rookie. Look at that, guys. LaMelo Ball, rookie. Pull LaMelo Ball. Hmm. It's not a numbered card, but that's got to be good, right? Because LaMelo Ball is one of the chase cards in uh, 2021. Cut him. Sneep. That's the LaMelo rookie. No cut. Look at that. Congratulations. I think you pulled a hot one, man. All right. So this is for Mr. Caesar Soto. Huh. Yeah, contenders are kind of cool. Perfect centering, too, says Keith. Oh, good. Keith Dutcher, yeah, you were slaying the altars when Eevee first came out. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So this is Caesar Soto. And we're going to place him. Oh, man. Caesar, you're going into a sort of like sports overflow. Because there's no more room on the table. Aaron Thompson, five NBA hoops and five 2021 prism. I have no bag, plus I'm a new member. So Aaron Thompson, which hoops is he talking about? I think there's only one hoops. The other hoops sold out, right? Yeah, there's only one hoops. Okay, perfect. And the other thing he wanted, and five 2021 prism. Now, you don't say which prism, so let me try and figure that out as well. I think he means the 2021 Panini Prism Draft Picks NFL. Is that right? All right, so that's what I'm going to do. NFL and NBA. And in the meantime, let's get some different music. How about Piranha Plant? <laughs> NBA hoops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we got five packs here. And NFL draft picks. One, two, three, four, five. So this is what we got. NFL draft picks. Let me just make sure that's got to be correct, right? Contenders, Chronicles, draft picks. Yes, that's got to be it, right? Yeah. All right, and that is for Aaron Thompson. Good luck to Mr. Aaron Thompson. I think we'll open up the familiar NBA hoops first. We opened a lot of these Panini Prism draft picks over the last week. Sneep. One, two, three, four, and five. We're already at 123 minutes, man. Whew. What do we got? We've got Darius Garland, Patty Mill, Eric, Danny, Pascal, Pascal Siakman. Siakman? Onyeka and Saban Lee. All right, Saban Lee. Here we go. And Mr. Siakman. Siakam. I think that was a little bit of a cold pack. John Collins, Brandon, Daniel, Reggie. Here's RJ Hampton. He's just a different colored rookie, huh? You also pull Isaiah Stewart and Jordan Nwara, rookies. Okay, nothing too wild so far. In the next pack, you got the Aaron, Mikey, Nicola, <laughs> Shai, Gilgis, Jalen, and Denny. All right. Dave went missing. Where's Dave? Okay, there's Denny. Here's Jalen. And here's Shy Gilgis. Gilgis. Woohoo! Pack number four. Seku Nikola, Ricky, Malik, Mitchell. Here is Kira Lewis. Kira. He's not LaMelo Ball. 
Jada McDaniels and Vernon Carey. Hmm. Hmm. Have you ever experienced a really big earthquake? I've never experienced an earthquake, in fact. I've been told, one time I was in the truck, uh, I was in a Target truck unloading boxes, and I was told there was a big earthquake while I was in the truck. But the funny thing is, I didn't experience it because it already feels like an earthquake when you're in that truck from all the box moving. It's such a sort of violent and aggressive job, you don't even notice that things are shaking because things always feel like they're shaking. Tobias Harris. So yeah, that happened one time. They're like, wow, we just had a big earthquake. Everyone was talking about it. And I was like, what? <laughs> Whew. Other than that, I have no memory of any earthquakes. All right, so those were your NBA hoops. Sweet. Now we've got our NFL draft picks. Experiencing an earthquake makes you feel so insignificant. Sneep. Sneep. And sleep. How about a earthquake? How about a uh, what? How do they say it? An earthquake orgasm or something like that? A climactic? I don't know. How do they say it? Something climactic? I, I don't know. Climax? Here, let's see. <laughs> what am I saying? Ben Roth Lisberger, Joshua Kelly. These earthquakes all the time in Cali. Larry Fitzgerald. What's this? Seth William and Mike Parsons. Earthgasm. That's right. Ooh. Boop. I'm not an earthquake, but I can make your bedrock. Yeah, some cheesy saying like that. Devontae, Patrick Mahomes, Julio Jones, Elijah Moore, and Carlos Basham. Ooh. Well, I like this music we're playing right now. The Piranha Plant music. So relaxing. Helps your focus. Julio Jones. Ooh. Okay. Next pack. Here's Chris Goodwin. Godwin, I mean. Carson Wentz. Mac Jones, Crusade Rookie. So this is, I think these are like meant to be their their hit. Basically, it's, or, it's, it's an orange card. Uh, and it's got whatever this crusade is, and it's a rookie card as well. I've noticed the pattern. So some cards just have a little extra oomph to them. Mahomes is a hit. Mahomes. Give me a second. Here you go. Here's the Mahomes. He's not a rookie card or anything. He's just a holographic Mahomes. Here's Jamie Newman. And Joseph Ozaya. Jose? Let's leave the Mahomes. You got it. You got it. Here's Kyler and Jacob. Tyler Lockett. Look at this Tyler Lockett. Mr. Aaron Thompson, you're going to have a huge bag. Kyle Trask. And Asante Samuel. He is the second coming of Tom Brady, is he? <laughs> Here's uh, James Conner, Aaron Jones. Okay, we got Aaron Aaron Jones. So this is just a orange card, right? Not a rookie. This is a Chrome rookie. Caleb Farley. Chrome rookie. Uh, Tylen Wallace. This is just a regular rookie. And this is a Crusade rookie, but it's not orange. See? So having an orange Crusade rookie is like the largest combination of, of special things you can have on these cards. So I believe those are the hits whenever you get one of those. Are we going to see any OG Pokemon card packs tonight, mister? Uh, you want to see some? You want to see some OG Pokemon card packs? I'm just here for the OG Pokemon card packs. We want a pack break. You want a pack break? You know, I don't think we ever found a numbered card last time we did the split on these. I'd love to see one. Everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> so he says, I'm a new member. Mr. Aaron... Aaron Thompson, you got a fat bag already because your order was so large. So you're ready to ship anytime you want, mister. And uh, let's go ahead and get your name on here. We're going to put you in the sport box. Aaron Thompson. Woo! This music. Du, 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 du. <laughs> Eduardo Pasquel says one live custom booster. 
Doot, 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 doot. It's Ice Cube. I'm sorry, Estuardo. Estuardo, you got one little Ice Cube. He's got a little ice block on his head. How nice is that? You're so polite. I like the cut of your jib. My jib? Is that like a giblet? Mr. Russ, TCC is Russ. I give in. Let's grade two cards in my bag that are CGC 10 worthy or that look good and one McDonald's. Okay, so let's get you a McDonald's, Mr. Russ. And you want to send two cards off to CGC, huh? So I'll help you pick out two good cards for CGC. The goal is to send out your cards, your two highest value cards. And uh, sometimes your highest value card doesn't necessarily need to grade 10. It just needs to be worth more than the next card, even as a nine. So here's Sobble. He's like, what? <laughs> he just found out he was pregnant. He was pregnant. What? Sobble, I'm sorry. You are not the father. So Russ, let's find your bag. I think you're up here. Russ, isn't there like a new emoji coming out where it's like, it's a pregnant man or something like that? I think that's a new emoji that's coming out. Or did it already come out? Pregnant man. What do we got here? So Lugia is going to be a contender. Lugia is a big pick. Uh, that's a Pikachu from General Mills. Bulbasaur is a pick. Charmander. Incineroar, he's pretty good. Pikachu is a top pick. All right, so you got a lovely bag. And when we take a look at the different cards, Pikachu's corners are gonna make him do no better than a 9.5. Incineroar is way too off center. Charmander is thin on the left, thin on the left. Oh, this card's awesome. This one's really good. The edges and corners look so good on this. So Russ, Pikachu and Lugia are gonna be the two cards going out. And those are great choices. And maybe you get lucky on that Lugia, I don't know. Well, the, no, the top on it looks a little thinner than the bottom, so it's not going to turn into a pristine. But if you can get a 9.5, that would still be very good. 9.5 or gem mint, remember that, guys. I got some 9.5s in my collection. All right, here's a Lugia. People can't stand that number, you know, it looks so imperfect. But all that matters is if you were to regrade it, like, with another company, would it turn into a 10? Yeah, it probably would, wouldn't it? So what matters is the quality of the card you're buying. There you go, Russ. Pikachu and Lugia. Good luck on your grades. I've never gotten pregnant so far. Touch wood. <laughs> what? Me neither. Next up, we got Aaron Thompson. He says, one gym challenge custom. You got it. Oh, right. So the gym, oh, gym Challenge Custom continues to get very close to a new round. We're going to put you on number four, Aaron. Aaron Thompson. There we go. That leaves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven spots remaining. We are quite close. Aaron Thompson again says, one live custom booster. You got it. Do, 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 do. Oh, Aaron, you pull CGC 9.5050. What is that? It's apparently it's good because I put the little lines on the card. 050. I'm looking for it right now. Oh, here it is. Okay, yeah, it is a pretty good card. So this is considered gem mint. This is like a PSA 10. a little cheaper than PSA 10 because some people still don't feel comfortable doing CGC over PSA. PSA is kind of like the leader. Okay, Aaron Thompson. Aaron Thompson. Oops. Whew. So this is yours now, and it is. It's Raikou from Amazing Rare. I'm sorry, it's Raikou from Vivid Voltage. <laughs> I was reading that instead of this. <laughs> How nice, mister. So after Aaron Thompson, we have Jeff Leon, one live custom and two CR. I believe that stands for Chilling Grain. I'm sorry, man. He just got to it first. It's Galarian Surfetched. I'm sorry. Let's try out those Chilling Grain, though. Aaron Thompson says, awesome. Thanks, man. No problem. Well, that was extremely lucky. Yeah, that was extremely lucky. So your odds of pulling that card were maybe like... 
one in five, one in six. I don't know exactly what your chance was, but it was it would have been somewhere in that range, I bet. And uh, that's how they work. That's how those custom packs work. And the other pulls are not quite as hot. We've got, oh, you don't even need the hot pull, man. You're picking up Alternative Art Calyrex. Very spicy. Look at this. Wow. And pack number two, Lycanroc. So you did pretty good anyways, Mr. Jeff Leon. Congratulations. Picking up that beautiful Cali Rex. And Jeff Leon, your bag is in the JE box, right? No, it's up top. Yes, that's right. All right, very good. Alternative Art Calyrex. Mister, I don't know if we can allow that. Nathan Sumter is next. He says one live custom and 10 Darkness Blaze. Nathan Sumter. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That is going to be one Zation Hollow. Now 10 Darkness. Do I even have 10 Darkness? I want to be out of Darkness in a minute here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You don't need the Hollows. Oh, mister. Uh, okay, good. We, we do have more Darkness. I guess I should reorder Darkness. Let me write down a list. You know, I had to start having a, a list that I use to keep track of what I'm about to be out of. You know, I, I just do it from memory all this time. All right. And I need a place for the list. Let's put the list, uh, put it over here for now. All right, here we are. Yeah, I need to keep track of exactly what we're about to run out of. If I was a real business, I'd probably have like a whole kiosk and software and everything to track everything, track all the sales. Mister, do we need vaccine passport to get feet pick? That's right. If you don't have your vaccine passport, you can't have feet pictures. Hello, darkness ablaze, my old friend. That's right. <laughs> darkness ablaze continues to be surprisingly popular. Surprisingly popular. Nathan Sumter. I think it's people going after the Charizard VMAX. Here's the Soul Rock. Escavalier Vicavolt. Do you remember if you shipped my bag yet? Lucas. Mr. Lucas, if you didn't get a message from me... Hold on. So I think there's guys who are starting to buy cards and they don't know how shipping works. So Lucas, you either A, ordered live shipping, in which case your cards did go out. Or B... You haven't ordered live shipping, which means you need to go get into the Please Ship channel, okay? So head over to that Please Ship channel and write me a message over there saying, hey, I want to get shipped. And then there's a little waiting period before your, your bag actually goes out, all right? That's how shipping works here. We got some instructions on Discord that explain all that. I really pretty badly need to make a video, I think. A video would probably be better than... People don't like to read, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't like to read. That's why I say that. I don't even like to read. So I shouldn't be making people read stuff. Serena is Serena. Instructions, what are those? For dweebs. <laughs> Jigglypuff. And, oh, Butterfree Full Art. Not bad. Ten packs, three pulls. Maybe I'll make that video right after tonight. Well, only if tonight's live stream isn't like freaking five hours long. I was like so tired at the end of yesterday's live stream. So all of this goes to our friend, Mr. Nathan Sumter. Nathan, here he is. Nathan, we're all out of room in the MNO boxes. I just don't know what to do anymore. It's 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 like so bad. I'm going to put you over here with Michael Cusick. I don't know what else to do. All right. Savannah Krill, international shipping to NBA contenders for a new bag. Sounds good, Mr. Sven. So contenders... We got one, and let me get another one. NBA contenders. I just like to grab random things, huh? Like, oh, that looks fun. All right, so this is for our friend, Mr. Sven. And he wants a new bag. Is it because the other bag's too full? Sneep. Wait, mister. Oh, no. He said wait, and I snipped him. What do you? What did you need me to wait on? Hopefully nothing important. He says stop. 
International shipping, two times NBA contenders for a new bag. Oh, Sven, you're probably on a delay, so you told me too late. He says it's Chronicles. Yeah, but your message says contenders, mister. That is that is the actual message. And they are sneaked. Uh, what I could do for you is... I don't know what to do. Shout out to Jeff Leon if he would be interested in selling that Cali Rex. Never mind, that is my bad. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what I could do. He says, I'll take them. I apologize, mister. You know what's funny, Sven? I myself have been very careful here because contenders and chronicles sound so close to each other that I'm constantly worried I'm going to open the wrong pack. So you did exactly what I'm scared to do, and that's uh, confused the two packs. Yeah, they sound so similar to each other. Contender, chronicle. They both start with the C, too. Well, hey, let's see what you pull. All right, so a lot of bulk here. Michael Portier, Kyle, Chris, Tobias, Seku, Jason. You have a Marvin Bagley with a special copper color to it, okay? And Contender International with Pascal Siakam. Siakam, huh, very neat. Now, for pack number two, Victor Al Nicola, Nicola De Aaron. What's this? This is a flipped around card. Oh, mister, you did fine, actually. Look at this. Picking up a signature out of those contenders. You did very well. That's a rookie signature, too. You see that? Rookie. Woo. Well, it turned out okay, I think. And you also pick up Steven Adams. All right. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Maybe the Chronicles would have been cold. Or just, you know, it doesn't have to be cold, but it just has to be worse than this round. Whew. So that's for Sven. And you said new bag? So Sven, I thought you had a bag. Do you have a bag? Is it because you have so much? Maybe it's because you realize you have so much you're probably going to need. Oh, yeah. So this will require multiple bags to ship. I see what you're doing. So let's grab that real fast. Let's get another bag together. A happy little mistake. Yeah. Uh, the message says contenders, and that's what we opened. And it was a good pack of contenders. All right. So, there is an 8-ounce limit on international bags, and so you would need the shipping for both of these bags. And I think that's what you just did here, so you've ordered shipping on a, on a new bag. You're going to have a ton of cards coming your way. So, we know this is bag number one. You got lots of cards over here, man. You got your own collection. Okay, Sven Krill. After Sven, we have Mr. Cheese. This plus my credit for a box of chilling. You got it, Mr. Cheese. And he wants an entire box of chilling rain. This is for our friend Cheese. Oh, Cheese. Who doesn't want to open a whole box of chilling rain? Tyler says, I mean ramen. Mr. Cheese. I think Cheese likes chilling rain. Did Cheese say he was going after one of the waifus? Is that what the deal was? I don't remember. He got the Galarian Moltres, and there are some waifus in here, aren't there? It's a waifu set. Melanie's in here. Who else is in here? Flannery should be in here, I think. Flannery's in here, right? Flannery, Melanie, Doctor's in here. He already pulled Doctor, though, but that was the amazing rare Doctor. I'm trying to think. Any other girls? Pionya, I think. Pionya's in here. I think Pionya's in here. Uh, what's the girl's name with the K? Clara? I think Clara's in here, too. Pionya? <laughs> Cheese says Pionya. So that's, that's the one, huh, Cheese? All right. <laughs> Gotta have Pionya. I want Pionya. You got it. P Anya. We got Sabal doing his jitsu. Here is Beedrill. We're looking for Pionya. We got Kaylee Rex. It's Kaylee Rex. Ree. <laughs> 
fog crystal. Weeding gloves. Ooh. Galarian sir fetched. Coughing in Zarud. How rude. Here's a Venipede. Shaman. What a shaman. Serena. Volcarona. I want to see your collection sometime, Cheese. You should make a video. Love to see what card you got. Here's Diglett and Metagross. Ooh, gross, gross, gross. I want to see if Cheese has all waifus or something. <laughs> Rune Rajas and Greedent. Oh. Flannery. I would love the Golden Snorlax, too. Yeah, actually, I would like one of those and the Galarian Moltres. Those, those are like my top two in this set. Golden Snorlax and Galarian Moltres. So, you are picking up a Full Art Metagross. This is going to count as like one of your hit cards, right? There you go. Gross, gross, gross. <laughs> I think that's how these boxes are working. So, in the Japanese set, this would be a hit. You know, there'd be one of these per 30 packs. I think it's very similar in the English sets. So that's half the box. Now we're going to look at the second half of the box. The second half of the box, guaranteed Pionya. Pionya. I'd rather pull Boobany than the Moltres. Boobany! <laughs> Snip. Full art Boobany. She says, I will have a perfect Pokemon waifu collection. It's probably not a bad strategy, believe it or not, Cheese. Because uh, those old waifu cards over time will probably probably be valuable to uh, certain types of collectors, you know what I mean? Snip. When it comes to collecting, something I've understood is like cards that are unusually high demand are the ones you want to you want to absorb all of those out of the market and then sit on them. All right, there we go. A trainer card collection. See, I don't think too many people are doing that. If you were a waifu, would you be cute? No, I'd be stinky. All right, here we go. I'd have one of those stinky pussies. Here's your mask. Here's Celebi V. Ah! Oh! Metaculture know the value of a waifu. That's true. <laughs> Here's... Oh. Ah, oh, I think it's the bronzong. It is. Oh, I'm sorry, cheese. Oh, cheese. So close to being the Snorlax. It was a golden card, but it was the wrong golden card. There's Spiritomb. You got Bronzong, though. He's pretty cool. Metagross, Bronzong so far. Oh, great. Man, you're doing so well, Cheese. You're going to have the complete bird collection here. Here's the Articuno. Guys, he's killing it. Dude, you got three three hot pulls in your box. There's Ralts. The Articuno is a, a highly desirable card, just like the Galarian Moltres. So now you got both of them. Damn, I shouldn't have sent your Moltres out yet. You could have sent them out together if you wanted. But now uh, the Moltres is already on its way. Let's get the gym challenge spot sold. <laughs> I just bought cards. I'm hyped. Here's Kubfu. Oh, it's time to change that music, man. We've been listening to the Piranha Plant too long. Here's Tornadus V. Yeah, cheese. It was actually a good box. You got the Galarian Articuno. Okay, here's Hatena. Zebra Strika. Do you like the level X cards? Uh, level X cards. Uh, they're a little after my time. I don't have any nostalgia for them. They look okay, though. I understand that they're rare and that they're old and vintage, but I don't have nostalgia for them. Something to think about, guys. And, you know, here's an interesting thing about modern cards. You got all these big YouTubers, SM Pratt, uh, ZNG Emporium, maybe TCA. I don't know if TCA ever talks crap on modern. You got all these big YouTubers talk shit on modern a lot, right? But one day, a lot of people are going to be nostalgic for these one day, okay? Because you know how these are like really mainstream right now and everyone's opening them? It's just like in the past. You know, the reason those old cards from the past 20 years ago are so valuable? Because everyone was opening them. It was a mainstream experience. It, the majority of the population was aware of Pokemon cards back then. It's happening again with these modern cards, okay? So there's obscure sets like the level 10 cards where the majority of people weren't really collecting Pokemons anymore at that point. 
And yeah, there's going to be a, a smaller dedicated community that really wants them because they're nostalgic for them. However, I think that these modern rounds, starting with the Hidden Legends uh, timeline, a lot of these cards are going to be extremely popular 20 years from now, even if the population's huge. So it's just something to think about. The demand might, it might keep the card price in a good, good range anyways. All right. So that was for Mr. Cheese. And Mr. Cheese, I thought that that was actually a good booster box. That's a booster box that you do well on. Not all booster boxes are good, but this one was. This was a hot box, just like, I don't know what I'm allowed to say on this channel. I'll say the wrong things. So we got Metagross, Bronzong, and Articuno. Woo! And then you got these four over here. Yeah, you didn't pull any VMAXs, just straight pulls. Good. Just straight hot pulls. The Metagross is probably the weaker of the full arts. Is it? Wait, cheese are right here. Cut your cards equals burn your money, change my mind. <laughs> well, I don't cut my cards. I let anyone cut their cards that they want to, but I, you know, I basically, I agree. It's kind of like burning up your money, but people would do it anyways. I suppose they'll do it for fun, and you can't tell people not to have fun. That's, that's for sure. You can't tell people they're not allowed to have fun. They will have fun whether you like it or not. Brian Bernal. What's up, Brian? He says, two chilling and three darkness. Anything for our friend Brian Bernal. How's the Articuno? It looked really good from the front, and it is packed fresh. I would send it out, because even if it's a nine, it uh, is worth it's worth more graded than not graded, because it'll be a high-demand card. Would I express it? I would not. Same with that Galarian Moltres. I wouldn't have expressed that one either. It's just too expensive. Um, I mean, unless people pay exorbitant amounts of money to have it, you know what I mean? So maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe the demand is so high that people will pay that extra $200 to replace the cost of the express grading. So when it, whenever it comes back, cheese, if you put it on the market, if you sell it, maybe you could try to sell it for like 2000 3000 Who knows? I, I, But I don't know if you'll sell, though. That's the thing. Because, well, but it's brand new and the pop can't be that high. So I, I'm just not sure. It's all experimentation at this point. It's, you know, trying to adapt. All right, Brian. We've got Skitty. Who knows what it's selling for right now? There's probably some expressed ones. Did we finally catch up or really far behind? We are catching up. Yeah, we're catching up a bit. This is for Brian Bernal. Go Lurk Rillaboom. Last Chilling Rain. Oof. I'm sorry, Brian. That's a tough round, Brian. Straight cold. Brian, I think we have a little pity pull pile. And you're so new, I'd like to get you a pull from there. Uh, why don't we get you this Calyrex, okay? There's a, a lovely Calyrex full art. That's for Brian Bernal. Let's go find his bag. Here we are, Mr. Brian. 10, 20, 30,000, maybe? <laughs> Imagine having that kind of money to just throw around. I'll give you 700 and a good night. Next up, we got a payment from Nicholas Lenhart, but Nicholas didn't tell us what he wanted. So we're gonna write that down that Nicholas was in line because he waited all this time and I don't wanna just refund him so that he has to get back in line. So Nicholas Lenhart, Nicholas, if you'll just send me a, a message on, on PayPal by sending me a penny and tell me when you send it and I'll go look it up and then we'll get you taken care of, okay? Donation, sure. I, I don't think so. <laughs> all right. You're taking dabs, mister. All right, no more Piranha Plant. I'm going to lose my mind. mind. <laughs> Let's see. We want Undertale. What do we got for Undertale? Boss seam theme. Can't speak. Another medium. Waterfall. I know Waterfall is good. There was one I was enjoying earlier. Is it like Market or something? Undertale. Maybe a shop. Let's try shop. I don't think it is, though. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's not this. Shop Extended. I wish I knew the name of it. It's like... Uh, falling Down... Asgore, Sans. It might be Sans, actually. Give me a second. It's this one. 
Doesn't that sound nice? There we go. All right, we're back at it. <laughs> Such a schmarmy sound. I'll get you, I'll let you get the first offer goblin when the Moltres comes back. Oh. <laughs> wow, you're a lucky guy, goblin. NFTs are good, only idiots invested in that crap. Yeah, very interesting. So, uh, so Nicholas Lenhart made his order. Looks like Nicholas ordered twice, and he says three NBA contenders on the second one. Hmm. So, you're going to get these three. One, two, three. <laughs> So Nicholas Lenhart, Mr. As NFT, LMAO, contenders. That's right. We've got contenders. Tell me your most profitable invest investment in the past year. Then I'll tell you how much I made from NFTs. Um, I invested in your mom's feet, and it went up by times 100. Mr. Have you pulled that Blaziken VMAX Altar yet? Not yet, but we pulled the Galarian Moltres, which I, I've decided I'm a bigger fan of the Moltres than the Blaziken, though they're both very cool. Yeah, the Blaziken's cool, but that... That Galarian Moltres is like, it's so edgy. So this is for Mr. Nicholas Lenhart, and he's still got another $40, $42, which we can uh, we can always refund that to him because maybe that was an accident. All right, let's see what we got. Inns, Chi. Oh, what are these? Kai Thompson? I'm reading the wrong word on the card. What's this? Patty Mills. All right, so Patty Mills gets a special red card. And James Harden. So I don't think that was a very strong pack. How about pack number two? Now, this feels like a fat pack. I think you might have gotten lucky here. Okay, Derek Rose, Julius, Andrew, Devontae, Joseph, Rudy. It is. So the second pack is Desmond Bain Jersey. It's the Articuno, a tier one CGC card. Yeah, that's how I would send it. So if you send it that way and they upcharge, I'll just let you know that they upcharged. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll get that fixed, okay? So there's Isaiah Stewart, rookie. And on your third pack, here's Carl, Rui, Victor, Al, Marvin, Kristaps, Giannis, and you have Rui Hachimara. Really? Just the Rui, huh? Rui Hachimara. Woohoo! That's for Nicholas Lenhart. Now, I feel like we had just seen Nicholas Lenhart, hadn't we? He was like in one of these boxes. Nick Weeks over here. Anthony Ravy. Sven, Sven. All right, two Svens. Oops, a little empty box tipping over there. Noel, Peter, Michael. I swear, we had just seen a Nicholas Lenhardt. Giannis. All right, we'll get the Giannis as well. Is Giannis good? Five times your profit, clown. What are you guys fighting over? Ha ha, I found you, Mr. Nicholas. Ooh, Mr. Nicholas. Wait, was it in this one? Maybe it was in this one. Is this one right here? Is that what you said, Giannis? Sorry, I'm bad with these names. All right. I doubt you would ever be able to prove that. Meanwhile, I could prove my NFTs. Here we are. Good good man. All but Thompson does is talk about crypto and NFTs. People who need to convince other people about an investment usually means it's not a good investment. That's true. By the way, this Pikachu is the best investment of your life. Hands down. Be sure to buy plenty of Pikachus. <laughs> you guys. So people are having a little they're having a little argument about NFTs. And I, you know, my perspective of NFTs, I'm very wary of them. I've, I've spent a great deal of time thinking about what they truly are. I think they're like an image, a digital image or whatever, and you've attached it to a unique hash, a unique string of numbers, right? And that's it. Okay, and the more you look at it for what it really is, it's, it's just a picture attached to a unique number. You go, oh, fanta fantastic. Should you pour a million dollars into that? I wouldn't. You know what I mean? I could, inv I could put a million dollars into Charizard. That would not make me scared. But a million dollars into a picture with the hash does scare me. Because that seems like something that would be hard to get somebody else to buy again. 
Can you save this chat session and sell it as an NFT? I'll bid three fifty. <laughs> Next up, we got Alexander Hewitt. Thanks for the great night. Please send tier one, no sub for Charizard and Blastoise. Also, five more packs of team up and live shipping. If the five packs pull anything gradable, please set aside for the live ship. Sounds good. This is for Alexander Hewitt. One, two, three, four, five. Do 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 this music's making me feel ornery. Oh, man. They don't use that word anymore, ornery. It's because it's such a weird word. It's like a backwoodsy word. Okay, here we are. We've got Latias and Latios. Woo. Pack number two. Don't beat up on anyone, okay, guys? Be nice. I personally think the entire NFT logic is dumb. Here's Leaf Blower. Look at this Leaf Blower. Latias. Cold and... Oh, Gyarados. So the Latias, Latios is a nice pull. Uh, however, you're wanting the Blastoise and the Charizard. So I will send him back home to you with your other cards. And we're looking for Mr. Alexander Hewitt. Man, I'm about to get jiggy with it with this music. Hmm. Mm. How much is that Moltres? Uh, the one that she's got? I don't know. A lot, presumably. Do, do, do. Do, 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 I bought an NFT for $90 last week and sold it for $900. Keep buying Pokemon cards. That will make you witch. NFTs are the future. Well, Bud Thompson, you didn't come in here to talk smack on Pokemon cards in a Pokemon card live stream, I hope, right? That's not very nice. I was just telling other people to be nice to you. My investment is better than your investment. Alligators are ordinary because they get all them teeth but no toothbrush. That's right, and then they get alligator tears. Wait, crocodile tears. <laughs> What an NFT? An NFT is like a digital sound or a digital image. And what they do is they put it on a sort of blockchain with a unique number. And then you can use the blockchain to trade it back and forth. And your unique number lets people know that it's, okay, it's this image. You know what I mean? So they, it adds, they, they claim it adds scarcity to it, but it, it's not really scarce. So I could take a picture of this Moltres and add a unique number to it and then claim there's only one of those pictures with that particular unique number. But like, who cares? Just take another picture of the Moltres. Now there's two pictures. You know what I mean? So that's how I feel about it personally. It's, it's, a, it's an image with a unique number. And when you think about it that way, which is the truth on what it is, you know, you could play around with it, but why would you spend like $900 on it? Well, and people will spend their money on anything. That's how companies like BitConnect uh, swindle people out of a lot of money. So the concept of an investment versus sort of like fool's gold or something like that, right? Something to think about. Fool's gold. You guys know what fool's gold is? Fool's gold was a mineral in the water that looked like gold, but it's not actually gold. So they called it fool's gold. And NFTs feels a little bit like fool's gold. That doesn't mean you can't sell fool's gold and make good money off of it. It just means that, you know, it doesn't really have very much value in a way. I think Pokemon cards do have more value. I like Pokemon cards a lot more. They got video game, huge Nintendo brand in Japan. Uh, they got TV shows and movies. And uh, the card game itself is an actual, it's a, it's a game. People play it. They sit down and they play the game. So an NFT is like, hey, I was the maker of this meme. I'm going to attach it to an NFT. Buy it. You don't want to miss out on this investment. That to me is more of a hustle. Kind of like the uh, pump and dump schemes that these YouTubers have been doing. All right. So, Mr. Alexander, let's get you a label. That's my opinion. I'm not trying to offend. If I hear like a really good counter argument, I could change opinions, okay? And then... That's the best thing to do is to try and change my opinion, but don't be mean. All right, there we go.
Next up, we got Alex PSX, who is ordering the box. All right, and uh, let's see what you have for your address in here, Mr. Alex. So Alex, where is Alex PSX? Is this Alex? I think this is Alex. All right, so Alex is telling me which address to use. And I believe I have the right one, Alex. So now the question is, how big of a box do I need? I think that has to be at least a medium, medium priority mailbox. All right, so we got the medium priority mail. Oops. All right, so. I've printed out your label, Mr. Alex, and you will be getting the vintage Star Wars box. Save the kids, by the way. All right, now, after Alex PSX, we have Mr. James O'Brien, another box of Shiny Star V. Wow, that took a really long time to get to, huh? Man, I'm so sorry about the long lines tonight, guys. I, I really didn't think it'd be this bad. It's so Star Wars. The Star Wars set is behind by like 85 minutes or 90 minutes. Yeah, next time we get those, we'll go through them fast. Whew. Here it is. We'll put this away over here. Mister, what do you consider a successful life? Uh, successful life, huh? Well, in a very practical sense, I'd say building a lot of stuff, inventing things, uh, providing a better life and uh, for the people ahead of you and having some kids and a good family. So I think that's a pretty common sense description. Yeah, doing, what, doing something that matters to you while you're still young, doing something you find fun, enjoyable, and improving life for others. All right, so this is James O'Brien. I'm all into leaving a better world for the kids, you know what I mean? All right, here we are. Keith says, God Pack. That's right, God Pack incoming. Here goes. Sneep. I have a brand new Range Rover. Nice try. Oh, yeah? You think that's good? I got a brand new pee pee chew. <laughs> What you gonna say about that? He was like twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> What's your biggest hesitation when it comes to having kids? Uh, well, I would say the first one has been money. You know, it's been so hard to move into a house where you feel like having kids. But maybe it's more like comfort, a fear of losing comfort. You know, it's not just me; it's my wife too. I think my wife's kind of aware that after women have children, they kind of put on weight, and they they're not young the way they used to be young. And I think she's afraid of that. And I don't blame her because I, I would feel the same way, you know. It's like accepting that you're getting old in a way, you know what I mean? But yeah, your responsibilities change pretty dramatically. And I had 11 siblings, so I'm I'm very familiar with babies. You just don't live the same life after kids, you know. It's now now you've got this kid that you're taking care of all the time. But you know, you got to do it. You got to do it because the point of life can't just be hedonism. I suppose it could, but it doesn't end well, you know what I mean? So you got to have kids at some point. But she's only 26. I'm a little older. I'm 32. She's 26. We could have kids today if we wanted, I guess, unless any, uh, anything's wrong with either of us, uh, you know, in terms of fertility. But she's getting a little older. And if she was my mom, my mom had her first kid at 18. And by now, she probably would have had like four to five kids. My mom would have. So my mom was uh, pumping out the babies. And my wife is more like just kind of cruising along. You know, we're living a fancier life than my parents ever did but we don't have uh, many kids. So there's a trade-off for sure. So it's an interesting question, the number of kids you're meant to have, you know what I mean? Thievel, it's Thievel. You know, maybe one day kids will feel like wealth again, but these days having a kid feels like a burden and just a burden. That's it, just a burden. Urshifu, my wife and I, we were watching, uh, what show were we watching? We were watching, was it? Was it Dante, the, the scary movie Dante? Oh, Damien, right? Is that the name of the movie? I think it's called Damien. I can't remember the name of the movie. But it was a movie that was made in the 80s. 
And it was interesting because the mother had like maids and shit. She had like a decent sized home and she had maids. And I looked at my wife and I said, wow, if we had maids, we could have kids all day. I don't care. The maids will do all the work, you know, and it is interesting. Life is really, uh, uh, maybe back then it was easier to have kids because you had, your parents were more involved. Maybe you did have a maid. I don't know. Maybe maids were affordable back then. It's, it's an interesting, this is definitely, it's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, nowadays, if you have a kid, you're going to have to pay some massive hospital bill. The hospital bills, I don't think they were always as big as they are today. And uh, just having a kid is really expensive now. The cost of goods have gone up. Imagine bragging about how rich you are in a Pokemon live stream at 4.40 a.m. Don't have maids raising your kids misery. That's not real parenting. I want maids raising my kids. I'd love to have that. But, oh, congratulations, Mr. James. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I thought it was Charizard. It was real boom. Oh, I got your hopes and dreams up. I'm so sorry. I thought that was Charizard's nose or something. Ah, uh, it's the lighting. It's a real boom. Womp. I got tricked. I got all excited. Psych. That's right. All right. Now I owe you a free box. <laughs> Here's. You got ball guy, though. Damn, it's ball guy. He wants to share all his balls with you. I'm sorry. I got you hyped over nothing. I thought you had pulled Charizard right there. All right. And there's Sam Azento. Whew. You did get a Charizard out of this lot, by the way. You got the code card Charizard. And he does not show up too often. So there he is. Charizard code card. Mister, do it grip the meat? Oh, uh, I would say yes. All right. So let's see. I would say probably yes. All right, Mr. James. Where did I put James's bag? Oh, I put it over here. <laughs> cold box. Is it cold? Let's take a quick look. Yeah. What's his name? Drizzle or something? Dracovish? Ball guy. Rillaboom's actually a hit. Uh, Rillaboom's good. Reshiram and Rillaboom are probably some... Actually, the Thievil's decent as well. So these three cards are decent. The Reshiram's a little common. So these two cards right here, Thievil and Rillaboom, are probably the two best. Also, the Charizard counts. West Onini, 20 more battle styles, 10 more fates collide. Thanks, mister. Throw the reverses. Sounds good. So we're going to get 10 more fates collide for our friend West Onini. I don't care what you drive. How many slabs do you have, says Goblin. <laughs> there you go. Goblin talking my language. You drive what? A Lamborghini? That's boring. You have a Charizard? Whoa. My heart breaks every time Mr. Confuses the 8th gen fossil Pokemon names. I'm sorry. I know. I, I'm very bad with those, actually. Bought me a Chilling Rain pack the first time I came in this stream. Oh, that's really nice of him. How nice. Now, I need to go get some more fakes collide. I'll be right back. This music makes me feel so like... What's the word? Just sort of like schmoozing about. Like, nothing's too serious. Like, what'd you say? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the schmooze music. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, and ten. And actually, it almost has a, a sort of like casting couch sound to it, doesn't it? It's a bit of a casting couch sound. You and I are going to make the baby. Does she got that suction cup, though? She does, actually. Put this away. So sick of Tyler tonight enough. What? Who's Tyler? There we go. Austin Powers 2. That's that's a good one, Tokemon. Yeah, it sounds like something from Austin Powers. Groovy baby. Mr. What's your thoughts on valuing money or experiences more? You have to have a balance because it's not like money is valueless, but at some point you've got enough money to meet all your needs and you got enough for your medicine and all that. And then after you've done all that conservative, uh, you know, security kind of stuff, now you have excess money and that's when you start going out and having vacations and fun. That's kind of where my wife and I are at. At this point, we are ready to buy a boat. 
we don't have enough money for a boat, but we will one day. Maybe next year, or maybe during Christmas, we might we might try to buy a boat. And uh, so we're ready to just have some fun and relax at this point. Whatever happened to Tyler Limehouse? I still have his bag. I don't know. Okay, we'll start with your 10 fates collide, Mr. Wes. We got a clothes dryer finally yesterday. Having more money is great. Clothing dryer? Man, we lived a long time without one of those. And we've got one now, and I still don't use it. <laughs> so we, we had a broken one in our condo that we just never fixed. And then we moved here, and we have one that works now. We just don't use it because we're so used to just hanging our clothes out to dry. It's not like a big, you know, it's not like a big thing even. All right, here we go. But then again, I don't do a lot of laundry, so I don't have a bunch of kids and family, just me and my wife, so, and I don't have a lot of clothing that I wear. I just wear, you know, simple round of shirts and a simple round of shorts, and that's about it, so. Fennekin and White Kai, you rim. Wow, that's racist. I usually rent a boat for the day from a guy I know. Maybe you could, maybe you could look into that. Boats really lose their value and are hard to maintain. That's a good point. Oh my God, it's so good. Guys, this is why we open Fates Collide. Look at this. Umbreon EX comes out of Fates Collide. Comes out of this booster. You guys don't make that connection. That's why you guys open all these other sets. You forget about Fates because you don't make this connection. This is uh, coming out of this set. Love this set. Now, the bottom is thin on it, so maybe you'll get a 9 on it. I hope you do. Uh, but it's still fantastic looking. And anyone who's just collecting it as a raw card, obviously, would really like to have that card. Here's a Bronzong. So interesting. Here's Bronzong Break. Maybe, uh, I wonder if they like Bronzong, because here's a Bronzong Break, and there's a Bronzong Gold card in Sword and Shield. I, I kind of liked Bronzong when I was playing uh, that generation. I like that he was kind of like a tough psychic po Oh, my God. And the Glaceon. I'm telling you, you guys, I got Fates Collide on purpose. Remember what I said about value packs? I get the packs where I expect you to get your money's worth. And I don't like to sell too many of the sets that I don't expect you to get your money's worth. Full Art Glaceon, Full Art Umbreon. There you go, Wes. Good thing you opened 10 more, huh? Oh, you got Shuckle. He's the best. He's just shuckling around. I like Shuckle. What do we got? We've got Glaceon EX. There's also an Umbreon EX in this set. Okay, and White Kyurum. Here's Mega Catcher. Wes, I'll buy the Umbreon from you. Bronzong. Just keep in mind, uh, Miss Toro Teal, it is an off-center one, okay? Okay, there we go. It's packed fresh, but it's a little off-center, so be mindful. All right, and we got your hollows. Actually, I think you said to toss these to the side, so those are getting tossed. And then here are your... Wow, those are some great pulls out of that round, man. If those were centered better, I mean, it would be crazy. Crazy good. Now, let's get some of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I like to go by Johnny Skidmark. <laughs> Bud Thompson. I think Bud Thompson, uh, I think he would argue with me over crypto in the past. You know, people are allowed to have their own opinions. Just because you think that one thing is right and the other thing's wrong. Somebody's, somebody is right, obviously. Like, yeah, it has to be that somebody is right. But we don't know that yet. It's all about predicting. Uh, and we'll see what happens over time. You know what I mean? People can't have their own opinions. No reason to be uncivilized. You just be like, I think you're wrong. What do we got? We've got, oh, mister. You're doing so well all of a sudden. Urshifu, Urshifu, hyper rare. Here's Perugly. Oh, mister. Senny Scorch, Tapu, Poo Poo. Poop. All right, and... Shinx. Tapig. And Necrozma V. All right. Not bad on those 10 packs. 
Now, he looked a little off-center, too, man. Those off-centerings are killing me. <laughs> do, do, do. Just, just schmoozing about. Ow, my fingers. All right. Yeah, that was a good choice, going a little deeper on those sets. And Mr. Butt Thompson, you know, that really just shows me that that's really how it is. Sometimes you get people who skim a little bit from each set, and really they never get a hit. And the trick typically is to just go deep on one set until you hit that hyper rare. Then you, you've gotten your, your hot pull, you know what I mean? That's been my experience from watching people open cards. But of course, you can always take a risk on opening a little bit of each set. Maybe you'll get insanely lucky and pull a hit from each one. It is possible. It just, it just never happens. It's so rare for it to actually happen. All right, next up, we got Eric Lovato, who says three more EV heroes. You got it. And one battle styles. Why, thank you, mister. Three EV heroes and a battle styles. Well, the Urshifu hyper was just sniped, but maybe there's another hyper rare in here. It's possible. Okay, here we go. Sleep. I'm not hiding how much I donate. You asked me to prove it. Why do I do that? One possibility is just ignoring people. Gingers don't have soul. I like ginger. Ginger's delicious. You guys cook with ginger? Ginger's like one of the best seasonings in the world. Ginger, cilantro, and green onion. You, do, you almost don't need anything else. Cold. Can I be mod? All right, we're making you a mod right now, Mr. Fallout Ranger. Woohoo! Fallout Ranger new mod. And how do ginger girls are hot, though. Yeah, actually, I'm a big, uh, I agree with that statement very strongly. I've always liked girls with red hair. I think red hair is very pretty. And a bit of the Irish look, right? My grandma on my mom's side was Irish. Maybe that's why I like that. I don't know. I don't know how attraction works. Must work somehow. All right. Eric Lovato. Isn't it true that you're more likely to be attracted to people who are more genetically similar to you? I think I read that somewhere a long time ago. I think I was like a kid when I read that. You end up being attracted to people who look a bit more like your parents, right? I don't know if that's true. Next up, we have Uriel Siguenza. First time opening with you, mister, so I hope I'm doing this right. Five Kings Court and two McDonald's packs. You got it. All right. No, Fallout Ranger, don't ban anyone. I was just teasing Fallout. We're just playing. <laughs> I was so I was also attracted to my Grammy. Was what? <laughs> Your Irish granny, Mr. West need 10 more pack from his order. Wait, what? Oh, you said 20 battle. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hold on, we're not done with West. Wes, I thought you just did a repeat order of your previous order. He, he ordered 20 of oh, this chilling rain. He ordered 20 of the battle styles, not 10. Give me a second. My bad. Stop the count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop the count. <laughs> I declare myself the winner. Oh, man. Neep. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask you a serious question? You sure can. Mr. I also ordered two boxes of Chilling Rain. <laughs> all right, here we go. He says it's good. They're probably all cold. You never know. It's like what I was telling the other guy. Could be two hyper rares in the box. All right, so Tyranitar. Scape Rope. Electivire. Bronzong, Salazzle, here's, oh, Tapu Coco, very hot, there we go, Luxray, Octillery, Durant, and Colossal, no, you're right, Wes, they were perfectly cold, and you bowled right through them. But that's okay. You pulled the, the Urshifu Hyper Rare. Did Fallout ban someone? Um, if if he did, I would have to immediately revoke mod. 
because we're just having a little fun tonight. He's just he's just mod for a night. That's all. It's just a little fun thing. Sometimes I don't tell people that it's a little fun thing, and, and they believe they're like truly a new mod, and and then I realize I'm being kind of a jerk. My wrench isn't blue. What? Fallout banned, but don't ban anyone. So next up, I'm sorry. Let me put this into Wes's bag. <laughs> Too much going on in the conversation here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, back to Uriel, who wanted five of the King's Court. And what needed to happen, I needed to open a new box of the King's Court. Where's the best place to sell sport cards besides eBay? Uh, probably a garage sale for 25 cents a card. One, two, three. Can mods ban other mods? Uh, no, that does not work. <laughs> mods cannot affect each other. Two McDonald's. All right, let's get those McDonald's. Old MacDonald had a Pikachu. Do, do, do. Scoopy, do, do, be, do, be. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do. We have too many mods. You can tie me up. Yeah, there. I actually agree, Mr. James. I've had a few people request mod, but we've got, like, so many mods. Sneep. 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 And sneep. <laughs> All right, Uriel, you pull. You've got Guilty Gearfred, the magical steel knight. Guilty Gearfred. Here's Tin Dangle D holes. What is a Tin Dangle? Magnet induction. Ooh. Tin Dangle D holes. Ooh. Rose Princess. And that's going to be all your Yugi's. All right. So those are your Yugi's. We just need Alex and Cheese best mods. We just need. We need Mary to become mod again. Best mod. Mary and Caitlin. Whoop, Grookey. All right, you got a lovely Grookey Hollow from your McDonald's pack. And Snorlax is a good mod. <laughs> Whoop. Oh, big snipe. Ah! Uriel just got a big snipe on his first opening over here. I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Uriel? I think it's Uriel. And that Pikachu does not come out very often at all. So that's a big snipe. Congratulations. I think that Pikachu comes out maybe once every 25 to 30 packs, I would say, on average. That's what it feels like. So that is a nice pull. Congratulations. Pulled anything from Yugi yet? Uh, not in a while. Quick, snipe. Snipe, snipe, snipe. Uriel. Siguenza. I think you might be the only person with the U for your name as your first letter. And that means you go in the Z box. Yeah, the Z box is pretty full. Surprisingly. Oh, man, I feel like something bit me. Did something bite me on the arm? Jesus. All right, let's change the music. We've had enough of this. How about that Donkey Kong opening? I actually still really like this sound. It's just it's on repeat. Donkey Kong. Oh, should be Donkey Kong. Give me a second. <laughs> Ah, isn't this nice? All right, let me turn this down a little bit. Emmanuel Panetta. Mr. Four Evos. Oh, we're jamming now. Why is the Donkey Kong music so good? Donkey Kong music is like some of the best old video game music out there. Think about all the, the big hits from Donkey Kong. Snip. 
it's, it's like the music was so inventive even. Like, what are these sound effects they're using? Emmanuel Panetta, you pull. Reverse Hollow Caterpie. And Mewtwo. All right, Mewtwo EX. Nice. XY era EX. And Caterpie Gang. I hear James O'Brien will pay you $100 for Caterpie. Here's Onyx, Magikarp, Beedrill. All right, Beedrill's decent. Remember, there's a lot of cards in this set, and uh, Beedrill is considered a rare card in the actual um, base set. So, Reverse Hollow Beedrill. Doduo, Staryu Seal, Charmander. Okay, he's really off-center, though, and Doduo. So, this is exactly what I was talking about. You could just pull Doduo. Although, I got to say, Doduo is well-centered. Diglett, Seal, Nidoran, Magmar. All right, and Magmar is going to be your last pack. Wow. Whew. A little bit of a tough order. I mean, you got a decent looking Mewtwo and a decent looking Beedrill. I don't think the Magmar and Caterpie will be quite as fetching. I didn't see any secret rares. That's going to be for Mr. Emmanuel Panetta. I appreciate it, man. Okay, we'll put that in the front with an E. We're always looking for Charizards in those packs. Highly desirable Charizards. Ernesto Ever Trominio. Emmanuel Gallon. A couple of manuals in there. Eric Shine. Wait, does he say new bag? He doesn't say new bag. Okay, let's check up top. Here we are, Emmanuel Panetta. I'm here for sex. Please DM me. I th wasn't it, I will sex with anyone? <laughs> we had a guy come into our live stream one time, and he asked a few sec He asked a few questions about Pokemon. I don't remember what it was. But then he said these iconic words. He says, I will sex with anyone. And then he's like, DM me. All right, next up, we got Cole Willard. Hey, this is my first time buying, and here's the list and everything. Not sure if I ever did it, but here we go. So he would like a Japanese Eevee Hero. Okay. Silver Lance. All right, one Silver Lance. Jet Black. All right, we got Jet Black. Here we are. Uh, Matchless Fighter. Here we are. This is looking to be one of those sampler platters. Team Up. Oh, this could be a hot Team Up. My DMs are full now. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay, Lost Thunder is this next pack. Oops. Here's your pack of Lost Thunder. I want to keep books, so six dollars. Okay, so what I'll do then is I'll do a live ship on these. All right. Actually, you know, I, I we might be able to keep your bag on the table a little. Well, no, because the six dollars really ought to be live shipping. All right, here we are. Sneep. Okay, first pack is cold. That was that was jet black. Here's silver lance. Cold. Here's EV heroes. Oh man, guys, that's so lucky. You got the secret rare Flareon. That's the chase, right? So very good. You got that on a single pack, so that was like a straight up snipe. You had a 1 in 30 odds of that. That's your team up. And Matchless Fighters, also cold. So you did a little sweep on all the other sets, though. So it all balances out in a way. All right. Congratulations, Mr. Cole Willard. You're going to go in the C-Box, but actually you're going to be live shipped. So what you ordered with the $6 is live shipping. That's what that is. And I mentioned to people, what I can do is I can... I can bring the weight of your bag up to about a pound with bulk if you want. When you do that live shipping, you can keep your bulk up to like a pound. But it has to be just under a pound, actually. It has to be 15 ounces or lower. So there you go, Mr. Cole Willard. Now, Mr. Cole, I'm going to go ahead and make your label. I see you confirmed your address. Thank you for that. You did a good job, Cole. Good communication. All right. Wow, we got two new uh, people in the stream, and they're both named Coles. We got two Coles all of a sudden, exact same name. 
crazy how that works out sometimes because it's it's not that popular of a name. All right, we're printing the label. You need good communication in a relationship. Yeah, everyone says that, but you know, it's not very good advice because somebody who struggles to communicate doesn't know how to communicate well. So it's like telling a depressed person to just be happy, you know what I mean? You just need to be happy. Why are you so depressed and trying to kill yourself? Oh, thanks for the advice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Next up, we got Lucas, four Eevee heroes, and two Chilling Rains. You got it. For Lucas, one, two, three, four. And two Chilling Rain. What would you do with common and common book lot? Um, burn it. Blend it. Will it blend? All right, here we are. Oops. Did you get your chair yet? Not yet, but this time it really is on the way. I had not actually ordered it, it turned out, which is why it was taking so long. So we've been sitting in the peasant chair, the terrible peasant chair, for a while now, and it's almost done. Thinking of ordering my Evo brick. What? <laughs> Hold. Here's Leafeon. Max Mofo blended his bulk. Did he really? <laughs> That's cold. Zorork. Oop. Deli Bird Shaman. Bid oof. Here's Lipard. Nothing too wild in this round. And that's for Lucas. Is it Lucaius? Lucas? Mister, you should invent your own perfect chair and call it the pear, Pokemon chair. All right. Let's enjoy the pear. What? <laughs> I don't know. That has a strange ring to it. Not the, not the good kind. Whoop. All right. Five AM gang. Oh, we're at 197 minutes. Do you feel bad if you fly past the lemonade stand? I laugh and wave. Oh, you know, I haven't seen a lemonade stand in a long time. Do kids still do that? Hey, we're near the end anyways. Yes, we are. So I have one more order from Michael Cusick. All right, guys, no more orders. Do not order any more cards. Mr. Michael, he says three Sun and Moon base and three Cosmic. You got it. Three Sun and Moon base. How much for Brick of Evo? I, I don't have anything like that. I have bricks where you will find some Evo in it, but I don't have a brick of just Evo because I definitely didn't spend time doing that. that. You know, if I had to sort through them... It just wouldn't be worth my time. I think I did have some ETBs, though, that were mostly XY Evo. So whoever gets those, if the e if the XY Evo bulk is more valuable, they got lucky. I was thinking about maybe taking some, like, hyper rares and slipping a hyper rare into a few boxes here and there to make the bricks, like, more fun. You know what I mean? But then maybe raising the price of the big bricks by, like, a dollar to compensate. You know what I mean? To offset the cost. He means 20 packs of brick. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you can order a brick. I, I don't know how many packs are in a brick. It might be like 10 or 15 or 20. I don't know. Here's Umbreon GX. Hey, that's a hit, mister. Congratulations. It's 20, says James O. Well, if anyone's going to order a brick of Evo, they got to do it right now because I'm trying to wrap up. Anorith and Rosa... We'll, we'll open it up nice and happily. Uh, and I would stay open to open some more Evo because I do like e uh, Evo. He says, but you said no more orders. He says, I will. Sounds good, Mr. James. Well, the reason why I'm kind of strict about how we shut down is because I try to avoid scenarios where people are like, well, I, you know, there's reasons why I try to call out no more orders. So anyways, Mr. Michael Cusick, there's reasons that go beyond just, like, trying to shut down. Do you have any bricks of feet prick picks? 
All right. Um, if you really are ordering a brick, I'm gonna go grab a brick. I'll be right back. this music man okay so we have a kilo of evolutions let's see what happens that looks illegal mister it feels illegal so james o was not kidding he did order one box of shiny star and a brick of evos wow jesse selena says three darkness ablaze so let me get this for, oh man, I gotta go get a new box of darkness. So let me go get a new box of darkness and open this up for Jesse Salinas. Give me a second, guys. All right, give me a minute. James is determined to pull the Charizard. James is really fun, man. I gotta say, this is, I'm very lucky to get to open up cards for you. So, but first, this is for Jesse Salinas, a little order of darkness, but let's try to wrap up for, for this, guys. This will be the last order for Mr. James. He's got a real nice large order, and it's gonna be very cool. All right, here we are. No sleep for Mr. Yeah, actually, I barely got any sleep today. I stayed out real late with my wife. <laughs> Pan poor and hound doom. Rawr. Shut it, Houndoom. And finally. Oh, Big Paracel. Golden Big Paracel. That's not bad, actually. Two hits and three packs is a pretty, pretty fast pull rate. That's for Jesse Salinas. Jesse. All right. So I think we'll start with the Shiny Star. And save the best for last. The Evos will be opened last. Tokimon says, yes, thanks, mister. Tokimon! All right. Oop. There we go. You, you sharded. You better go change your pants, mister. Finally, Sneep. That's a lot of Sneep. Holy. Holy. Holy schmoly, man. All right, good luck to Mr. James. Cinderace on the first pack. Ooh, Amazing Rare Reshiram. Not what you want to see, actually, because I think that replaces a full art. Okay, but that's okay. You can still pull Charizard after pulling Reshiram. Urshifu. With Crobat V. Keep the live going. I'm up all night, sleeping cards all night. Well, you can always rewatch an older stream. So there's must be like hundreds of hours of stream, hundreds, probably thousands to be honest, of stream hours. So you can always rewatch yesterday's stream or the night before that, or you can pick like a time like a week or two ago. Blastoise, if you're trying to get further away. Here's a Rillaboom. Oh, Rillaboom. Rillaboom. Charizard again. That's a, that's a good uh, code card. That's the best code card, right? I think we can agree on that. And then this is like whatever Minchino turns into. Chinchino, Minchino, something like that. Cappuccino. Here we go. Last night's stream was insane. You should do OT. What was insane? What was insane about it? I don't even remember. Buzz over 1K, Pog. Country Road, take me home. 
Country road, take me home to the place I belong. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, a Veltol. Oh, no. So I think you got a Veltol Reshiram. The pulls were insane. Oh, yeah, it was really fun. Here's Pikachu. Pikachu is also a good code card, in my opinion. All right, and Phalanx in that pack. Man, you might have a cold box. I'm worried for you. I think these amazing rares are a little... Uh, they're a little sussy baka. There's too many of them in the shiny star. Oh, you got to be kidding me, man. You did pull a, a full art and Clobopus. However, it is another Rillaboom. So you are double down on the Ribble, the Rillaboom. Speaking of double down, when is KFC going to bring that double down sandwich back? Moltres and Zation. All right. That was such an average box like your other box, but... Just remember, James, it could always be worse. You could have gotten full art in doo-doo, which is easily the worst pull. Oops, this goes to the bulk box. Mr. James. So you pick up a second Charizard code card and another full art Rillaboom. It's okay, I guess. Again, I, I would call it an average box. Much better than getting a, a truly cold box. You could have gotten a box with like and Doodoo -doo and the Birdcage Keeper, whatever, Bird Keeper. Now, how about your kilos of evolutions? This is actually pretty pricey, guys. We'll count the packs up to make sure it's the right number. I looked it up, and yes, one of the reasons why cocaine is shrunk wrapped, shrink wrapped or heroin is to try and hide the scent of it from. Uh, drug sniffing dogs and they'll cover it in like jalapeno and stuff like that to try and help all right here it is there's nothing impressive about it some people are just lucky with investments Sleep. i'll flip that around just woke up from sleeping thanks for sending out pikachu and lugia no problem your lugia looks really good by the way the corners and edges on it look like perfect kilo of evo cocaine smells like petrol isn't, isn't that because they actually do mix it with petrol i'm pretty sure that it, they do they extract like they take cocoa leaves or some shit like that and then they mix it with all kinds of like horrible horrible chemicals that you should never consume okay here's evos speaking of chemicals we should never consume my wife and i were laying around in bed today talking about how we've never done weed we've never had marijuana and we want to and we need to figure out how to get that arranged already i'm gonna have to get some like some weed gummies from somebody or something because it's still not legal over here in missouri isn't that wild oh that was another thing i heard in the i heard in the news that the democrats are moving to try and legalize marijuana at the federal level and i was like yay something everyone can agree on woohoo all right, here we go. Oh, right off the bat. That's a good start. So you pick up a holographic Mew in the first pack. All right, we like that card a lot. I can ship Weedles for Pokies. All right, I'm doing a trade. My Charizard for your Weedles. Looking for a bag of gummy Weedles. Here's Nidoran. All right, Nidoran. Machoke. All right. I'm doing a thing these days where I actually search for the secret rares right away. Weedle, Dodo, Growlithe, Onyx, Raichu. Here's Raichu. I grew weed for 10 years in California. So the Raichu is a good pull. Here's a Charmander. Vulpix. Okay, Vulpix. Oh, man, I'm running out of penny sleeves again. How many penny sleeves did we go through this? This live stream, we went through so many because I was sleeving up every Star Wars card like a doo-doo head. What was I thinking? Why would, why would I do that? I know that the cards are bold. All right, here we are. Charmander again. Misty's Determination. All right. I've said it a bunch of times already, but I actually like this reverse hollow, the Misty Determination. If I get any of those and they're well-centered, I send them out to grade. Here's Poliwhirl. 
Illinois is legal not too far away. Well, it is now that I moved out to Lake of the Ozarks, believe it or not. Now it'd be a much, much longer drive. When I was living in, uh, when I was living in St. Charles, it would have been all of a 40 minute drive probably uh, to get to some sort of Illinois dispensary. But now that I live in Lake of the Ozarks, it would be like a two and a half hour drive just to get back to St. Charles. And then on top of that, another 40 minute drive to get to Illinois. So you're looking at like a six hour round trip for something that could literally just be shipped. Brock's Grip Full Art and Reverse Hollow Gyarados. All right. It's the best, mister. I'm your age. Give it a go. Well, you know, I don't even think I'm really interested in it myself. I'm 100% sure that my wife is interested in trying weed. I'm, I think I'm the kind of person where I just like whatever. If there's a drug out there I like, it's whatever drug makes you work harder and makes you think faster. So, I, you know, for me, it'd probably be like cocaine or something like that. But if cocaine is actually pretty bad for you, I'm, I'm never. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> my champ and Mewtwo. Okay, you got my champ reverse hollow. He looks pretty nice. But yeah, so I don't ever see myself really enjoying weed, but I'm definitely going to try it. That's for sure. I'm going to try it and know what it's like. And my wife will probably try it and get hooked on it because she will probably instantly like it. I know her. She'll end up liking it. Electabuzz. My wife likes anything that makes you feel like chill. Or like uh, relaxed. She really likes anything like that. But I'm, I'm the opposite of that. Caterpie, Poliwag, Pikachu, and Charmander Reverse Hollow. So that's considered a hit. Congratulations. <laughs> so, so far you've gotten the Mew Hollow. You've gotten the Brock Full Art. And the Charmander Reverse Hollow. And the Pikachu Reverse Hollow. We're looking for Charizard now. Oh man, you also got the Mew Reverse Hollow. Dude, this might be a, a, a shot at a PSA 10 for sure. So that's real good. I like that. Okay. Charmander over here. Here's Hitmonchan and Hollow Raichu with the print line. <laughs> there we go. Raichu and Hitmonchan. It's surprisingly similar to collecting other things, so it's pretty addicting. Star Onyx, Voltorb, Tangela, Misty is determination. He must be talking about Pokemon. Man, you got two Mews. This is definitely a Mew round, huh? Okay, Misty's Determination twice. Here's another Magmar. Try Delta 8. It's legal. Really? And finally... Gyarados Reverse Hollow. Wow, so what's interesting in this round, we didn't see any secret rares I noticed. And uh, we didn't see a whole lot of full arts or EXs either. There you go, Mr. James O'Brien. Wow. Delta 8 THC gummies. Yeah, it will relax quick. No secrets. What? Watch them Delta 8 carts a lot are fake. All right, let me go ahead and sleeve these up. So these are your non hollow Charmanders and Pikachus, which, believe it or not, people actually grade those and somehow sell them. It's amazing. Let's go over some of the better pulls. So we like Gyarados. I do actually like Misty's Determination. Now, these hollows, the problem is they got print lines in them. That's a reverse hollow rare. I like the Raichu, but it does have a print line. Here's Mew, Charmander, Electabuzz. Um, I think Machamp's one of the most graded cards in the world. I don't think any Machamp's ever going to be worth too much. Or the base set Machamp, I should say. Ninetales Break. Here's a Gyarados reverse hollow, Brock Grit, Misty, Full Picks. This looks pretty nice. Machoke Me Daddy. Here's Nidoran and Mew. So this was definitely a Mew box. Yeah, that's that's correct. You got Pikachu Charmander and Double Mews. That came out of 20 packs. Okay. So maybe like four serious hits in 20 packs. One every five almost. The right. I mean, a lot of these are just okay. Yeah, I like these. The Gyaradoses are nice. There you go, Mr. James O'Brien. Now, James. You need a second bag, don't you? Because your first bag's not going to be able to handle all this, right? Send the brick to Columbia. <laughs> all right, and then I'm going to have to find a way to get rid of this dirty money. i got to wash the money while I'm in Lake of the Ozarks. <laughs> I'll do it by opening up a, uh, a Pokemon strip club. 
All right, James, let me set your bag right there. James, thank you so much for all the support, man. That's very generous of you. And uh, and it's also very fun for all of us. There is a lot of speculation about it. People think they're worried about announcing it. Uh, they're now announcing it because they're still pretty new. What? No, no, no. Receive the brick from Columbia. Receive the brick from Columbia. What? What are we talking about? Mr. Pack Break. No, we won't be doing any pack break tonight. We'll be wrapping up tonight. So I see an order from an Alexander Hewitt, one book box, and one book ETB. Thanks, mister. All right, you got it, Mr. Alexander Hewitt. I'm gonna go ahead and get those together. Give me a second. So that is going to be a regional rate box. Wow, really expensive to ship that to you. I guess it's because you're in California. It costs like an extra $3 for some reason. And a padded envelope. All right. And let me just write on these so I know what's what. This should say a junk box, and the other one should say ETB. All right, cool. No, 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 you don't have to. No, 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 you're good, Alexander. It's my cost. That's my shipping cost. You already paid, so you're good. You don't have to pay anymore. It's just bulk cards anyway, so you, you know, I just try to get them, get them over to you. <laughs> I really view bulk as like a big, some sort of like money making thing. It's just a way to get rid of it rather than throwing it away almost. All right, very good. So we're all done for the night. I want to thank you all for watching and we'll be back on tomorrow night. If you hadn't hit the subscribe button, we're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers and we are on our way to 30 and moving pretty fast. So I appreciate you guys hanging out and all the cool cards we've opened and we'll have more Star Wars as well in the future because I think the Star Wars... Those sold very fast, and we can get more of those, okay? So I'll see you guys.